interrupt our regularly scheduled programming to bring you this special presentation on Wildcats Radio 1290. This, this, this is the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip Off Show on the home of Arizona men's basketball, Wildcats Radio 1290. And you'll leave it for Shellstead. Outstanding freshman, Oregon native, and just a steal. Taken away by Whiteman. He'll feed it off to Johnson. Lay it up. Missed no good, but a foul called on Oregon. How about that? So you start the walk on in Grant Whiteman. You feel like it's just a feel good moment, and my man gets a steal on the first possession. <laughs> Oh, man, I love that call there by Ryan Hansen. My man gets a steal <laughs> for Grant Whiteman. And uh, what, a, what a moment that was for that senior walk-on to get that start uh, for the Arizona Wildcats and their win, their senior day win uh, last Saturday at McHale Center over the Oregon Ducks. Welcome to the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show. We are coming live to you from the MGM Grand Garden Arena here in Las Vegas. We have got a double dip of basketball for you today. The Arizona women will be playing in the quarterfinals here of the Pac-12 tournament against the number five Tro women of Troy of Southern California. That game is coming up at 7 o'clock here in Las Vegas. And then, of course, uh, the game that we'll be paying uh, our attention to as well here on Wildcats Radio 1290 tonight, Arizona men's basketball beginning their final regular season, regular season weekend in Los Angeles. They'll be taking on the rival UCLA Bruins. That game will come your way at 7.30 this evening. So the men, obviously, are on Wildcats Radio 1290 tonight. That means that you will need to listen to the women's game. You'll need to tune over to Freedom 1400 KTUC. Freedom 1400 KTUC will carry Arizona women's basketball tonight. That'll be at 7 o'clock. Our coverage over there on Freedom 1400 will begin at 645 with Derek Palmer's uh, call on that. Arizona, Southern California, Third meeting of the year between those two teams. Women of Troy won by 17 points in Los Angeles. Arizona had a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter against USC and in Tucson just two weeks ago, two weeks ago yesterday, as a matter of fact, uh, but could not hold that lead as the women of Troy whittled it down to five in the last minute, got a three to tie it up, sent it into overtime, it went to double overtime before the women of Troy emerged victorious, 95-93. to 93, And they did so uh, with their star, Juju Watkins, fouled out of that game uh, for most of the fourth quarter and the overtime sessions. That, that is a, 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 a tough loss, obviously, for the Arizona women's basketball team. Had they been able to hold on and win that game, I don't think we'd be talking about uh, whether or not they're going to the NCAA tournament. They were likely already have been in. Uh, so they need to maybe win this game tonight. If they win tonight, Arizona, I would think, is in the NCAA tournament. Regardless if they win tonight, they've still got a good shot. But they'll be on the bubble if they lose here tonight, and they're going to have to wait for Selection Monday for sure to find out if they will make the NCAA Women's Tournament for a fourth year in a row. All right, let's give you an indication of what we have got in store for you on this show tonight. Let's take a look at the Right Way Rundown and see what's coming up on our pregame show. Brought to you by Right Way Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Do things the right way. And there's a lot, as you can imagine, as we try to uh, chat about two games here this evening. You've got uh, Arizona men's basketball. We'll review the Senior Day win over Oregon. We'll get you set for the game tonight against the UCLA Bruins. Also, we're going to hear from the Arizona women's basketball team. Uh, we'll give you their press conference after the win last night over the Washington Huskies. Uh, our view from courtside today, we're going to chat with Doug Gottlieb. This game actually between Arizona and UCLA is going to be broadcast on national radio tonight. Now, you will not hear that in the Tucson market because, of course, we carry the games here. Uh, but if you live in another part of the country, you can listen to that game on any of your local stations that carry Westwood One. Spiro Didis will be on the play-by-play -play side of it, and Doug Gottlieb 
Uh, the national talk show host and college basketball analyst will be uh, on the analyst in the analyst chair today, and he will join us from Los Angeles a little bit later uh, for that ball game. Uh, we will also hear from Bet Shelby, who was the assistant coach, one of the assistant coaches for the Arizona Wildcats. She had the scout last night in the game against the Washington Huskies. You'll hear from her. Also, our best bets brought to you by the Desert Diamond Casino. Arizona men, a nine-point favorite tonight for that ball game in Los Angeles against the Bruins. So a lot in store for you as we take you over the course of the next three hours, getting you set for two Arizona basketball games tonight. The women here in LA and Las Vegas against Southern California and the men in Los Angeles against UCLA. We also want to hear from you uh, this evening. 520-848-1290. 520-848-1290 is the number to get in on the program. It appears that the first game here in Los Angeles, I should say Las Vegas, has gone final. And uh, it <laughs> talk about double overtime. <laughs> that is, we, we got a lot of blowouts yesterday here in Las Vegas, but the first game of the day was not that. It went to double overtime. Oregon State comes back to beat Colorado 85-79 to in double overtime. So the Oregon State Beavers are moving on to the Pac-12 Conference Tournament semifinals tomorrow. They'll play in the early game against the winner of the next game, which will uh, likely be getting started a little bit later than normal here. It was supposed to start at uh, 2.30 local time here in Las Vegas, but we're already obviously at 2.36, so they're behind schedule there, but it'll be the California Golden Bears against the number two Stanford Cardinal. All right, I'm in Las Vegas, back in studio. I've got J.W. Madden. J.W., the final trek for the Arizona Wildcats to Poly Pavilion as a Pac-12 team. We talked about what it meant when the Bruins came to Tucson. Uh, same type of meaning for those folks as Arizona comes in for the last time. Yeah, and I know a lot of the Bruins fans maybe not don't talk about it publicly, but they really care about this rivalry as much as Arizona fans do. So I'm sure that there'll be a lot of passionate fans in the house tonight. I also believe maybe 20% might be Arizona fans. They haven't gotten... When, when, those, when that team's on a four-game losing streak like they are right now, DK, uh, sometimes the fans may not make the trip. There's other things to do in L.A. However, the final game between these two great rivals in that building, I mean, I, I'm hoping for a very raucous crowd, and I'm hoping for a great game. And also, uh, Mr. Ifan is sitting in your chair. Calvin Ifan, welcome. He is joining us as well, the captain. Uh, from 1998. Uh, Kelvin, just uh, your initial thoughts on the Wildcats making their final trek uh, into Poly Pavilion as a as Pac-12 uh, nephew or Pac-12 cousins, I guess is the way you might put it. Well, I mean, just hearing that and just thinking about it, I mean, just uh, it just don't seem real. I mean, when you think about the Pac-12, you think about UCLA, first of all. And you think about Pac-12 basketball, you think about UCLA and Arizona, the game. So, um, yeah, man, I, 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 man, it's, it's starting to feel weird to me right now because it's getting real. I mean, when you're playing the other teams, I mean, we, you know, not so much, but this UCLA game just, uh, uh, man, it, it just, just feeling that it's over, it just seems unreal. Yeah, I didn't think about it much that last home game against Oregon, the nah. senior day. But when I was leaving the building, Kelvin, I thought to myself, this is the last Pac-12 game I'll ever see in this building. Yeah. So it's that kind of finality of it. And obviously, everybody knows about the UCLA Arizona rival. I think they've won something like 24, the conference titles, since right. the both teams have been in there. Um, I think I'll probably think more about it, honestly, this summer, or like when it's passed. Like right now, I'm worried about Washington State. Right now, I'm worried about what the, the guys got to do out there in Westwood yeah. to get it done this season. And having, you know, being about 50 myself and being around for most of that UCLA Arizona rivalry, especially when it got hot there in the mid 80s. Like I live for that stuff. And obviously Cronin's team's down a little bit this year. Got a lot of freshmen, but it's still Bruins Wildcats. It's still about who's going to got bragging rights in the conference. And I'm, I'm all about it. I'm all about this final game. Can't wait. Yeah. All right. Coming off senior day, a win 183 over the Oregon Ducks. Uh, a lot of emotion was in the building. Uh, but Tommy Lloyd uh, tried to get his kids uh, to have the right mindset to play through that emotion. 
we talked about not being emotional. We talked about just coming out and, and you know, just kind of staying locked in and doing our jobs. And, you know, there's, there's time to get sentimental and, you know, that that's after. And this team is not a, you know, I mean, we, we want to win the, the Pac-12 championship. That's important. But, uh, but you know, but by no means were we, you know, are we, you know, reflecting or doing anything like that at this point. I mean, we, we, we have a long way to go. I mean, we, we feel like we just started. So, I mean, that, that's going to be our approach. And you heard the basket there at the top of the show. Grant Whiteman, the local youngster out of Sound Point Catholic High School, won a state championship with the Lancers, getting a chance to get the start on senior day last Saturday. And, and Grant thrilled for that opportunity. I mean, I, I'm not going to commit to anything. You know, year to year, but I, but I, but I love doing that because I, I know the true value that those walk-ons and managers have to the program. I mean, you know, you, you could tell a lot about a program by the way they treat their managers and their walk-ons, and and our guys are treated like anybody else. So, so that I mean, anytime I can do that for a Grant Whiteman, I mean, I'm going to do it. And you know what? It works out. He, he got a steal first play, didn't he? <laughs> I mean, I'm just thinking, you no. Know. Don't do anything too special and kind of just play, play within the system. Felt good. I mean, it was an honor to start, you know, four years, getting the opportunity to. I thank Tommy, and it was really special. What was it like lunging for that steal? And was that, did you second guess yourself at all to go for that? Or, you know, was it just instinct or what? No, I knew, I knew to go for it. And, it, you know, it felt amazing to get that on the first play. Yeah, I mean, you don't get a lot of, uh, you know, those opportunities. And it's, it's, it's really cool to see those walk-ons start on senior day, especially if it's a local kid like, like a Grant Whiteman who grew up in this program. I mean, that's a memory he's going to be telling his kids and his grandkids about for years to come, guys. Yeah, yeah I mean, what is it like, you know, Papa Olsen? Or, well, I mean, I'm not <laughs> sure exactly what he called, but I bet you loot, Kelvin, was probably t teaching – a uh, little Grant how to maybe get that offhand into the passing lane when he was four or five. So getting that steal in the first place of senior night was real special. Yeah, and I guarantee you he went to every camp, you know, every <laughs> summer. So, yeah, I think he know a little bit of something about Wildcat basketball. Colin Boswell, boy, what a half of basketball did he have in that game. And, and fellas, it was something we didn't talk about. We'll, we'll hear just uh, from Tommy Lloyd first, and then we'll dive into it. Uh, obviously, he did not start. He came off the bench, came off the bench, red hot. <laughs> Tommy Lloyd asked about how hot Kyle Boswell was uh, after not starting. I mean, that was awesome. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and if I had a crystal ball and knew that would happen every time, I would start Grant Whiteman and bring Kylan off the bench. But, like, I don't, so. Was it at least a shade of what you saw from Kylan last year when he was coming off the bench and, and he had to do that? I mean, I, not, not really, not really. I mean, I just I saw the ball coming out of his hand really good to those early shots, and I, you know, and usually when he does, he, he, he can get on a little bit of a heater for a few minutes, and that's what he did. And, guys, of course, there was going to be talk about, okay, well, you know, Kylan you know, came off the bench and, and gave this team a spark. Maybe that's the way to go. But I don't think Tommy was having any of that conversation. No way. No way, man. I, I, I you know, that's that's actually funny to me. Uh, uh, you know, I think he would have played the same way. Uh, I just think it was his mindset. I just think he was ready to go. And uh, I think he would have played the same way if he started. So, yes, it, yes, he, he did do well coming off the bench. He did well coming off the bench last year as well. But for this team right here, um, I still believe that coach want to keep it how he had it. You want to keep that. Uh, 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 chemistry with the starters that you have and, and then have the, th the three guys coming off the bench. So I think this is a terrible time of the year to be questioning, <laughs> you know. I just, you know. I think it's dumb. I think it's that whole correlation is not causation thing. I think if you're talking about Kylan coming off the bench and the average fan or some, you know, somebody on, on Twitter saying, well, that means he plays well off the bench. He should come off the bench every game. You could also easily say Kylan Boswell plays well, Kelvin. When he shoots with confidence, right. Kylan Boswell plays well. When he doesn't pass up looks, Kylan Boswell yeah. plays well. When he takes that shot without playing around off the dribble too much, those are also all things that led to that game against Oregon. Uh, coming, the coming off the bench part really is not a factor unless you're talking about maybe a guy gets moved like last year where they made that switch about 15 games in with Cedric Henderson Jr. Uh, and Pella and that whole switch that they did because clearly there was a 
a bunch of evidence that you could point to. But now one game, sat on the bench for three minutes, came in. I just think Kylan's been playing really well in that Oregon game and in the previous games before, shooting with a lot of confidence right now. Well, one guy who was appreciative of the performance by Kylan Boswell was one of the seniors, Keyshot Johnson. We've been talking to Kylan all year. Like, Kylan, the youngest on the team, but, man, he, his ceiling is, is, is crazy high. Like, you know, um, he got so much weight on his shoulders just by him being a young vet. Like, he a young vet with us. And, you know, I don't know what was it, you know, I don't in his head, but I'm just glad, like, he made our senior night a hell of a one to remember, you know, him coming out and just doing that, especially in the first half, how hot he was, the confidence that was, that was going in his eyes that I seen. It was, it was like no other, you know. And I just appreciate him for making making my last uh, last dance on Mikel a one to remember. Yeah, and another thing that made it one to remember was the way that the Wildcats shared the basketball, matching a team high in assists with 27 on the night, the most they'd had in a Pac-12 conference game this season. Our program is built on our shots, so we just got we got to lock into our shot. We got to lock us now. I mean, our, our shot, the, the definition can vary guy to guy what an hour shot is. So I, I, I thought we just got to settle in and, you know, early in the game and, and you know, just make sure the ball's fine in the open guy and, and have your hands and feet ready, locked and loaded, or, you know, attack the paint, finish layups, play with your feet on the ground, look at cutters. I mean, just these things we practice every single day. Well, and it was interesting, guys. One of the conversations after that game was just all the individual runs that, took place. I mean, you had, you know, Caleb Love scoring baskets in bunches. You had Keisha Johnson scoring uh, baskets in bunches. You had Pella Larson scoring baskets in bunches. Just the different guy. I mean, we've talked all season long about, you know, the runs that this team can get on in, in, a, in a ball game, but the individual runs that players can get on is pretty impressive. Yeah, you got some ballers, man. I mean, they've proven themselves by this point. I mean, uh, you can believe in these guys. I mean, when, you, when you're watching them play. I mean, there's some things, of course, on the defensive end with the three-point shooting, uh, with the three-point shooters that we have to take care of. Uh, but I just believe that offensively, man, we have a few guys, man, that can, that can score with the best of them, you know, starting off with love. And I think people under, underestimate what Boswell can bring to the table. I'll tell you this much, CK. You know, Coach O'Neill was pretty fond of going to the same well. Kelvin. I mean, he would run a play for a guy 10 times in a row. Coach Lloyd has made it very clear that's not his philosophy. He does not go to a, quote, hot player or somebody's on a heater or those kind of things. But you know what does happen, Kelvin? Players look for those dudes on the court. So if right. you're talking about a guy who's made three shots in a row, uh, like Caleb is the perfect example of that. I mean, you don't think if he makes two in a row that they're not looking for him oh, next yeah. couple times on the court. Like, they know what's up. So it might not be in the coach's philosophy to go to one guy and, and, and you know, run that well dry over time. But it's the players know the flow of the game. The whole offense is based on flow. They know who's hot. They know where to get the ball. And obviously, again, it was senior day. Five seniors honored. Pella Larson, Umar Balo, Caleb Love, Keisha Johnson, Grat Whiteman. Players gave speeches on the floor after the ball game. Uh, Pella Larson, uh, on, of course, we heard his speech. Uh, it was very colorful, to say the least. And he talked about uh, what went in to the message that he delivered after the ball game. And honestly, I just had, had the time of my life here at the University of Arizona and, and uh, with these people. Uh, so I just want to do something special for them and, and for the people that support us. That's, that's it, really. Uh, are you able to talk about your, your emotions? Uh, what was going through your mind when you were checked out for the final time this season? I mean, it's emotional, you know, because it's been three years that I've been in Arizona now. And, and, you know, if you take a look at it, it's going to be the last time you're going to play for the crowd. And then, you know, you feel like, oh, man, like I'm going to miss this thing again. You know, like I'm going to miss being this part. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss uh, the fans and the tunnel, like uh, the culture and everything. It was a little bit emotional. <laughs> All right, we, we we got folks taking pictures here. Let me let me wait. wait. Yeah, you guys are on. no 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 no. Come on, you're on you're on camera there. You're on camera there. All right. I'm so so now that you came by to take a picture, yeah, I'm gonna you gotta you gotta talk on you gotta tell me who you are now. Okay, wait, hold on. Let me let me let me let me get your mic going there. All right, tell me no who you words, are, please. Tell me who Barb you are. Barb Miller Webb. I'm sorry. Barb. Barb. Okay, and Barb, and we're, how uh, are you from Tucson? 
Uh, no, my wife is. Okay, she's from Tucson? Uh, she's from Arizona, and she went there. Okay. Went to U of A. All right, so you guys are out here supporting Arizona women's basketball. You and what do, you, what do you love most about this team? The, they're scrappy. They, they had very few players this year and still were able to pull it out and doing a good job here. Outstanding. Who's your favorite player on the team? Ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, uh, freshman. Jada Williams. Skylar Jones. Skylar Jones. Skylar Jones. Four, yeah. There you go. How about your wife? Who's, who's your wife? Yeah. There's your wife. We'll show her on camera. Who's, who's oh, your favorite player? Poya. Huh? Poya. Helena Poya. Oh, yeah. Helena Poya. There you go. Man, seven miles in one game. <laughs> seven miles yeah. in one game. <laughs> but, yeah, hands they, down all day. Go Cats. All right. Okay. Well, you guys enjoy the game tonight. I appreciate you. you stopping by. If we win tonight, you got to come back tomorrow and we'll take another picture. This is all right. Because we took a picture with you yesterday. Yes. We we that was good luck. Yes. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> Outstanding, outstanding, ladies. Thank you so much. All right, we got all kinds of great fans from the University of Arizona that we'll filter through and we'll put a few on the air if they want to talk some Arizona women's basketball as the ladies will play tonight at 7 o'clock against the Southern California women of Troy. All right, let's get a break in here. We'll come back. We'll start to dive into Arizona and UCLA tonight over in Poly Pavilion. It's the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off show coming to you live from the MGM Grand Garden Arena here in Las Vegas. Kelvin Ifon, J.W. Madden back in Tucson. I'm David Kelly. You're listening to Wildcats Radio 1290. This hour of the Meridian Wealth Management pregame show is brought to you by Advanced Auto Care, Crest Insurance Group, Desert Diamond Casinos, First Chiropractic, Frog and Firkin, Kaiser Garage Doors and Gates, Picture Rocks Cooling, Heating and Plumbing, The Polston Results Team with Keller Williams, Southern Arizona, Royal GMC Buick and Cadillac, Royal Kia, Royal Jaguar Land Rover, The Window Depot. Tired of dry, itchy skin? Have mineral buildup at every faucet. Ram Plumbing's affordable, green, eco-friendly water you? softener and alkalized purification systems are built right here in our great state of Arizona and use a fraction of the wastewater as their competitors. Want soft water, non-chlorinated, or the best alkalized drinking water? You can trust Ram Plumbing to be your one-stop shop. Ask about their Water Taste Challenge. 40th year anniversary savings, up to $500 off water systems and $40 off any service. If your plumbing's in trouble, call Ram on the double. As Arizona's leading personal injury law firm for more than 30 years, Goldberg and Osborne agrees, bear down Arizona. With offices statewide, including five in Tucson and Southern Arizona, the Eagle gives you home field advantage. More than 1,800 five-star Google reviews prove Goldberg and Osborne has the playbook for any situation. So after any accident, let the attorneys voted best personal injury law firm tackle that insurance company and get you the settlement you deserve. Goldberg and Osborne, 1-800-THE-EAGLE. Saguaro Harley-Davidson wants your bike. Call or visit our website to schedule an appointment or stop by today to receive an inspection and an offer. Whether you're looking to trade in or trade up or just looking for some extra money, we are prepared to make you a tempting offer. Don't deal with the hassle of selling it to a stranger. We're here to make the process quick and easy. Only at Saguaro Harley-Davidson or online at saguaroharley.com. That's saguaroharley.com. Some restrictions may apply. See dealer for details. Southern Arizona Radiology Associates have been dedicated to providing superior images and quality care for the last 35 years. They're the one you trust when you need an x-ray, CT scan, ultrasound, mammogram, or MRI. They have locations in Tucson, Green Valley, and Sierra Vista. Ask your doctor to refer you to Southern Arizona Radiology Associates today. That's Southern Arizona Radiology Associates. Visit their website at sararadiology.com or call 520-335-6849 for more information. My heat and air work in a state of disrepair. If there's a hot spot in your house, you may have leaky ductwork. The Department of Energy says 95% of homes do. Those leaks can pull in dirt and humidity. I'm Ron Arenas, the owner of Picture Rocks Cooling. Ask how we can tackle those leaky ducts and keep cool air in and dirt and humidity out with AeroSeal. Call Picture Rocks at 520-440-4069. Picture Rocks Cooling. 
cantina nachos, strawberry watermelon margaritas, a few zombie kills, and all your favorite sports teams live? When your day calls for some winning, it's time for Dave & Buster's, where you can eat, drink, play, and watch all the sports you want. They've got massive HDTVs, hundreds of the hottest new games, a chef-crafted menu, and an incredible list of beers, wines, and cocktails. So remember, if your day calls for a little victory, a little triumph, a little win, it's probably calling for Dave & Buster's. You know it. Your neighbors know it. And let's face it, the mailman knows it too. Your yard just isn't what it used to be. But thankfully, Dorado Rock Materials can get you, well, your yard anyway, back to what it once was. And even better, Dorado Rock and Materials has just what your yard needs, from decorative rock to boulders and everything in between, brought right to you. And if you need help spreading it, we can help with that too. Dorado Rock and Materials. The right service, the right product, the right price. Think of waking up with energy, standing tall and feeling free. Think first, chiropractic, good health is to enjoy. First Chiropractic offers military discounts to retired and disabled veterans, and they now accept patients with access insurance. For more information and to find the location nearest you, visit firstchiro.com, the most trusted name in chiropractic care. First Chiropractic, good health is to enjoy. KCUB Tucson, a Cumulus Media Station. We have the Arizona Wildcats covered on game day like no one else. We are Wildcats Radio 1290. The Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show continues on the home of Arizona men's basketball, Wildcats Radio 1290. Mac steps top of the key, hesitates, drives inside, a shot, no good, grabbed by Nuba, missed the dunk. Larson the rebound, off to Love, Cats on the run, Love through traffic, to the bucket, up, it is good, and he's fouled! That was a game in which the Wildcats were down 19 points in the first half at home against the UCLA Bruins, but were able to come back, rally, and win in the Bruins final time in Tucson earlier this year as a member of the Pac-12 Conference. Welcome back to Countdown to Tip-Off. We are live at the MGM Grand Garden Arena here in Las Vegas, getting you set for two basketball games tonight. The women playing here in the quarterfinals of the Pac-12 Women's Basketball Tournament against Southern California. The men in Los Angeles at Poly Pavilion for a game against UCLA. There are two number five rankings involved in these two games tonight. On the women's side, the women of Troy are the number five team in the country. And on the men's side, the Wildcats are the number five team in the country. Let's take a first look at the UCLA Bruins. Our first look at today's Arizona men's basketball game is brought to you by the Window Depot. Lowest prices and biggest inventory. Shop the windowdepot.com. As I mentioned, Wildcats rallied to win that game against the Bruins at home. Tommy Lloyd on what he and his boys learned from that first meeting. Well, I mean, it was a, a frantic and panic game. You know, I mean, they, they, they jumped us a little bit. And, you know, I mean, it, and you got to give them credit. They came in here and earned the lead. And I'm sure we made mistakes. But, you know, mistakes happen in basketball. And they capitalized on our mistakes. So... Um, and then, then we scratched and clawed and, and found a way, you know. Um, I, I was proud of that effort, but, but I was also, you know, I'm aware, you know, of, of how good UCLA can be. And, and you know, obviously we got we to play better, you know, going on the road to, to give ourselves a chance to win than we did, you know, in, in that first half and, and early in that second half against them. Any different now than you did, you know, the last time you saw them? Um, you know, no, no. I mean, not, not in particular. I mean, I think that I don't, I don't know if they've had any major injuries that I've noticed. Um, you know, they're they're definitely a, a better team now than they were at the start of the year. And you know, I think guys are you know comfortable with the roles that they're playing. Um, you know, they they have a force inside and in Bona. That's just a, he's just a really good player, and he's he's a lot to deal with. At, you know, at both ends of the floor. So, and then those guards have, you know, gotten comfortable and confident. And, um, you know, I mean, I, I, I know I, to me they're, they're a good ball club. You know, I mean, I think you, you take away, you know, some of those losses they had early in the season and, um, and, and just focus on, you know, their more recent stuff. That they, they're pretty good. Are they better, guys? 
Are they really better? I mean, this is about as helter a skelter a UCLA team as I've seen in quite some time. They're I six mean, months older. <laughs> right. They, they won four in a row to start the season. They had a four-game losing streak in December. They actually uh, would lose eight of nine between December and the beginning of January. Then they got hot, and they won eight of nine between the end of January and the beginning of February, and now they've lost four in a row. So are they better? I mean, yes, they're better because they're older. They've been playing a lot of freshmen on that roster. Um, the issue, you know, with Cronin's team this year is the NIL situation in Westwood's not exactly great. And so when you lose, how much firepower do they lose? 80% of their score and all their rebounding from last year. Those guys were fifth-year, fourth-year starters from last year's team. We all we saw those guys, Hawkes, and, you know, Tiger, all those guys for so long. Uh, when you have to replace all that, this is just a simply, a, a, other than Bona, you know, a bit of a rebuilding situation. I think it takes time. Kelvin... You're always talking about how long it takes to work new guys in. When you're talking about bringing in two fifth-year transfers or fourth-year right. guys like <laughs> exactly. Arizona did this year, much easier than working in a lot of 18-year-olds trying to adjust to the physicality coming from Europe and whatnot into that Westwood and playing Cronin's system, which is very specific. I just think it took them a while to kind of figure things out. What do you think? Yeah, and the teams that beat them, uh, if you look, all mature teams, you know, all older teams. And But the one thing different about Arizona is that they play different versus Arizona, UCLA, uh, you know, Cronin, and just those kids themselves. Uh, I always say guys come to Arizona to play against the big names. Well, that's the same thing at UCLA. They come to UCLA to play Arizona. Yeah. More than likely, that's the game uh, that's going to be for the conference championship, whether it be um, uh, the regular season or the conference uh, uh, tournament. So I just feel like that the UCLA guys get up for that game. You look at some of the competitors like a, a Bona and a Mac, those are very competitive guys. Yeah. So when you see a team like uh, Arizona comes in, all that extra energy starts coming out uh, because you start thinking about, man, this is a game that everybody's going to be watching. This is a game that's an NBA game that if I play well, they could give me some notches on the NBA game. So I just think the UCLA guys just step up a little bit for this game. And DK, I am the last person to make excuses for the Bruins. That being said, let me put these into perspective by the numbers. Eight freshmen. And four sophomores on that Bruins roster. They got three upperclassmen, one senior. So eight freshmen and four sophomores in a Cronin style. I'm just And he I'm, always bring everybody back. People yeah. don't transfer from UCLA. Yeah. So I'm almost glad that they're I don't mean to cut you off, but I'm no. almost glad they're going out the pack twelve because how many guys we're losing? Yeah, yeah. And we would have to deal with those guys for about three years because they Cronin guys stay. It's exactly what I was thinking. Next year depends on what happens in the portal this year. Obviously got some freshmen coming in for Arizona, but similar situation next year is what you said is looking at this year is that you're losing like five seniors from the roster, right? So yeah, I just think DK that that's a young team that took a while to, to put things together. Uh you know, they're just very inexperienced. Wildcats are 5-2 and two against UCLA under Tommy Lloyd. However, both of those losses have come at Poly Pavilion. I mean, uh, you know, Tommy Lloyd has only lost 17 games. Poly Pavilion, one of those places he has uh, never won. It is the rivalry. It is a rivalry which UCLA has controlled. 63-49 all-time in the series in favor of the Bruins. Tommy this week reflected on the history of this rivalry. You know, hopefully the the memories will stay recent because we'll continue to play them, you know. So, um, you know, listen, I, I know that there's a, a, a good chance we'll have to play, you know, obviously you say once, maybe twice more this year. So um, I, I know the, the rivalry is important to both fan bases. Um, you know, I, I don't get too caught up in that, you know, because I, I just have to try to prepare my team to play against their team. And, and so any, anything, you know, the, the past history really has nothing to do with this game. Um, but, but emotions are involved for the fans, and I understand that. I don't know if they're, the emotions are as strong for, you know, the current players or the current coaching staffs. Um, but, but I recognize how special the, you know, both brands are and, and what they've meant in the history of college basketball. And, you know, and, and it's an honor to be participating, you know, as, as a coach of one of the teams. Mick Cronin this week was asked uh, if he has seen any change in the Bruin or in the Wildcats, I should say, since the last time that these two teams got together. I don't see much difference. They're pretty good. <laughs> They're pretty good. I mean, unless you give me maybe an area to think about. But... Uh, I mean, their guard play has changed a little, I'd say. In, in watching them, it seems like there's some guys getting more 
time or more emphasis on the ball than previously? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. I, I think they. You know, those guys have all played all year. You know, like because they play small when they go to the bench. They have a bunch of big guys on the bench. They they, they don't play. They they bring all guards in and they just play four a four guard lineup to get. But they've done that all year. At some point in the year, they made that move pre conference though. So when we played them, they did the same thing. And they've even gone uh, to. Uh, with that with Johnson at the five. So when they go to they, they go to the bench, they go small. Other than Krevis for Ballo. So I don't think there's a whole lot uh, of difference with, with that. I mean, guys get hot and cold, but I mean, Love's a player of the year in the Pac-12. I mean. How does your scout change for that? Does it does it change when you play them a second? A second time, or is it just re-emphasizing? Well, that would be any team. Yeah. No, you're always. I mean, you're always looking for uh, things you, you know. Look, there's stuff that coaches are going to talk about, but with the players, no, not when you play them. You know, they're plus eleven on the glass. That's a big concern. It's a huge concern of ours. That's what got us beat at uh, down there. We, you know, now Brandon didn't play. He got. He couldn't breathe. Um, there was a lot of concern going on that you do nothing about during the game because he couldn't couldn't breathe. So um, we had to play Will. You know, we had to play four guards, and we're not big. Our guards aren't big enough to be that. Will's not big enough to be that. So that killed us on because Burke had massive foul trouble. So that killed us on the glass. That and they hey they just rebound the hell out of the ball. You know, Ballo's huge. Johnson's a you know they got a fourth year center, a fifth year power forward. And a great freshman guard rebounder. Lewis is a, he's a great, great athletic wing, attacking, rebounding guy. And obviously Larson. He does everything. Cornyn like K, likes KJ a couple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not surprised. <laughs> hey, I got a little perspective, DK. You ready? Yeah. So you mentioned that Arizona all time is 60, uh, 60 losses, 49 wins versus the Bruins. So yes. 49 and 60 all time. Do you know the record before Lute Olsen got on campus? Uh, Three wins and 22 losses. Wow. So the Bruins were 22-3 and three versus Arizona before Lute stepped on campus. They are 46-38 and 38 against the Bruins since 1984. So there's a there's little perspective. Uh, the wooden years were not kind to anybody in the United States. No. And they didn't really play too much back then. <laughs> but UCLA dominated 22-3. and three. Uh, before the early 80s. So, yeah, ever since then, they've been pretty much even. Yeah, to win tonight for Arizona, they're going to have to really attack uh, Adem Bona. He is one of the better defensive players in the Pac-12. I would imagine he's probably going to end up on the Pac-12 all-defensive team when this weekend is over. 6'10", 245. He's averaged 12 points, six rebounds, two blocks, and an assist in 29 contests, and Adem knows that rebounding is going to be huge tonight if the Bruins have any shot of winning this game. Rebounding is obviously vital. Um, we lost the battle at Washington State, and that kind of hurt, hurt us a lot. Um, we, do, we have to go out there and like scrap for every battle, you know, for every ball. Um, what is that we gave up a lot of rebounds, and I think that hurt us big time. So I don't think I think guys, was not gonna let that happen again because we can just keep giving rebounds to teams, you know, offensive rebound, defensive rebound. We have to go after them, especially me and myself. Um, I didn't, I didn't have a good showing for myself. I was in stay for rebounding, but um, I guess against Arizona, rebound is gonna be huge for us. So um, we're gonna be we're gonna crash in the glass. said that <coughs> your rebound action might be hurt because they're. Other teams are focusing on so much that yeah. it's actually, he said, that frees him up to get rebounds. Have you noticed that, that you've become the focus of the other team, boxing you out? Yeah, I, I like, yeah, I, I've, I've noticed that, but at the same time, um, I have to do a better job of attracting more people to me so my teammates can get more, you know. If they're focusing on me, I got to fire around where there's two more guys on me and there's more more my teammate free, you know, so. Uh, Obviously, I, I do got to do a better job getting more rebound and also attracting more attention to me so my team can get more. So. Adem Bona 
Um, another big matchup of big men when you talk about a Dembona and Umar Balo. Umar Balo, uh, another side note to this game, going for history tonight as he'll look to get his 10th straight double-double and match the mark set by Al Fleming back during the 1974-75 season, most ever in Arizona Wildcats history. That is our first look at the UCLA Bruins. That's been our first look at today's Arizona men's basketball game. Brought to you by the Window Depot. Lowest prices and biggest inventory. Shop thewindowdepot.com. And don't forget, Window Depot also sponsors Arizona's top rebounding performance every night. It's the Window Depot glass cleaner of the game. Might be the Wildcat with the most rebounds. Might be the U of A star with the most impactful boards. We will tell you the Window Depot glass cleaner of the game coming up tonight on the Meridian Wealth Management post-game show. Countdown to tip-off coming to you live from Las Vegas and Tucson. Arizona women's basketball taking on number five Southern California. Number five Arizona men's basketball visiting UCLA. With Calvin Ifon and J.W. Madden, I'm David Kelly. You're listening to Wildcats Radio 1290. This, this, this is the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show on the home of Arizona men's basketball. Wildcats Radio 1290. Sean Furrier for Jack Furrier Tire and Auto Care. Spring is on its way to Southern Arizona, and while we're hoping for a few more weeks of mild weather, we know extreme heat comes next. So right now is the time to get your car or truck road trip ready. And with 14 convenient locations, Jack Furrier Tire and Auto Care is the place. Not sure about your car's air conditioner? Need to check out that light on your dashboard, or make sure your battery can make it through another summer? Jack Furrier Tire and Auto Care is here to help. With decades of experience here in Arizona and dozens of top shop awards for tires and automotive maintenance. And right now, save big on the brands you love, like Michelin, and get big rebates, like $100 back on Cooper tires. Plus, buy three, get one free on Cooper's new Pro Control Series tires. You can stack on even more savings when you pay with your Jack Furrier card. Check out jackfurriers.com for all the promotions and details, and even more money saving coupons on top of our already low prices. Jack for your tire and auto care since 1960, here to get you there. Coach Tommy Lloyd here. Right way heating, cooling, and plumbing always delivers excellence. Great news. Free furnace season has been extended through the end of March. Have you been thinking about replacing your heating and cooling system this year? The Spark Business, we're giving away an 80% gas furnace or a heat pump air handler with the purchase of a new air conditioning system. And if that's not enough, we'll include a Wi-Fi thermostat, 10-year parts and labor warranty. Plus, we have zero interest financing available. Call or text 520-200-2422 to book your free estimate today or visit rightwayac.com. Experiencing the Sonoran Desert's natural wonders comes easy at Rock and K. Nestled at the base of the Rincon Mountain foothills, enjoy stunning mountain views up close every day. Six model homes are now open to tour at Del Webb at Rock and K. Here, life is about more than just beautiful homes. It's about the experiences waiting outside your front door at this new 55 plus active adult neighborhood. LiveRockandK.com. Designed by nature, built for you. Proud U of A radio broadcast sponsor. Here's an important message from University Termite and Pest Control. The weather is cooler here, and so pests are seeking alternative housing. Do you need a professional? University Termite and Pest Control has been serving Tucson since 1974. You can be assured University Termite and Pest Control will keep you pest-free using the most responsible products and application methods. 28 school districts, three hospitals, two colleges, one university, and thousands of homeowners trust University Termite and Pest Control for the past 50 years. You can too. University Termite and Pest Control. Find us online at bepestfree.com. True Wildcat fans know that when you're looking for the best place to watch all the big games on big screens, drinking cold beer and having the best food, all paths lead to Desert Diamond. Bet on your Wildcats and all your favorite teams 24-7 on our easy-to-use kiosks. Come chill on our comfy couches and build your best bet at Arizona's best bet, the Desert Diamond Sportsbook and Bar. Desert Diamond. 
an enterprise of the Donna Autumn Nation. Problem gambling? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Desert Diamond Casino is licensed in Arizona. The Window Depot is proud to sponsor the first look at today's game and would like to invite Arizona Wildcat fans to visit one of their Tucson warehouses. The Window Depot provides over 1,000 in-stock vinyl windows, interior and exterior doors, plus granite and quartz countertops, and a huge selection of custom cabinetry, all at the lowest prices in town. Consider the Window Depot your MVP when it comes to your home improvement needs. Stores are open Monday through Saturday or order online at thewindowdepot.com. The Window Depot, more than a window store. Does it feel like the price of everything is going up, up, up? We can't control the price of gas or groceries, but at Royal Buick GMC, we never add market adjustments, even while other dealers add fees because inventory is limited. At Royal Buick GMC, you can rest assured you won't pay market adjustments, and we stand by our transparent online pricing. Royal Buick GMC, the dealership that's different. OAC plus tax, title, license, dealer installed options, and 529 dock fee. Royal Buick GMC, in the Auto Mall and at RoyalTucson.com. This, this, this is the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show on the home of Arizona men's basketball, Wildcats Radio 1290. Looking, looking, finally gets it out to Love. Ballo setting the screen, Love around it to the free throw line, throw it inside, Omar with the left hand, slam it down with the hammer. Our pregame show spotlight on a cat is brought to you by O'Reilly Chevrolet. Get more with O'Reilly Chevrolet. Back here in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. It's a double header of basketball tonight for you, Arizona women's basketball. In the quarterfinals of the Pac-12 Women's Basketball Tournament taking on Southern California. That'll be at 7 o'clock. You'll hear that game on Freedom 1400. KTUC Freedom 1400. Coverage beginning at 645 with Derek Palmer. And then here on Wildcats Radio 1290, it's Arizona Men's Basketball. We've got you till 630. And then Brian Jeffries and Reggie Geary will take over with tip-off at Poly Pavilion against the Bruins coming up at 730 tonight. A nationally televised game. Uh, that uh, will be on ESPN. Kelvin, real quick, this guy went to Vegas for a week, and then daylight savings is Sunday, so he's been <laughs> off by an hour the first week, and the next week he's going to be on the same time as Tucson. Really weird. Weird timing. <laughs> it's crazy. I didn't even know that daylight savings time was, was happening this weekend. I wasn't quite I, – I was thinking – I don't know why I was thinking it was later on in March. It's, I think it's normally – I just think it's later in the month than – than the first weekend in March, and so I'm going to be all over the place in terms of uh, my scheduling. Yeah, it's just funny because we've been coordinating <laughs> interviews all week, and it's always, well, Mountain Standard Time or Vegas Time or whatever. Next week, it's just Tucson time. Yeah. Um, well, apparently the weather here is as bad as it is back there. Uh, I saw a video it, of some hail. I thought I saw some hail damage just north of here on Oracle where some ooh. somebody's car got messed up by some hail yeah, just north by the it's, mountains. It's, yeah. not, um, it's not raining Currently, at least not here at the arena, although it is very overcast and it's much chillier today uh, than it has been uh, the last couple of days here uh, in Las Vegas. So we'll see if the, uh, the weather improves. Uh, earlier this week um, on the Tommy Lloyd radio show, uh, Tommy was gone. His, and we'll hear from Tommy La- Lloyd, Lloyd later on that. Uh, his son Liam, who plays basketball up in northern Arizona, had his senior day on Monday. So Tommy and his wife Chanel were up in Flagstaff for that event. So Jack Murphy uh, sat in with Brian Jeffries, who also had a chance on Monday night to talk to the point guard, Caleb Love. And that is our spotlight tonight. Let's hear from uh, Caleb Love with the voice of the Wildcats, Brian Jeffries. The senior from St. Louis, Missouri, Caleb Love to the uh, Union Public House. The uh, former Missouri High School Player of the Year. I didn't realize until I actually looked this up, Caleb. It was, what, a week ago you, got, you, you surpassed 2,000 points in your college career. You, you scored more than 2,000 in your high school career. Yes, sir. That, that's an amazing accomplishment. For so, sure, for uh, sure. So tell us about uh, St. Louis High School basketball and, and because th- th- they play some good ball back there. Yeah, for sure. It's um, definitely competitive. Uh, you know, just being from St. Louis, we got that you know type of mentality of, you know, grit, hard, hard working, and you know you just gotta earn everything. So, 
uh, I think it's, it's St. Louis basketball is definitely up there with the best of them. All right. Well, you heard Murph talk a little bit about your arrival here. T- take us through this past summer, maybe the first time you, you landed in Tucson, your first impressions. And, and uh, I know you guys, the, the foreign trip was a big part of getting to know each other. Yeah, it was uh, great. Uh, you know, I took my visit um, and I committed on the, uh, the, on the spot uh, on my visit. And uh, ever since then, uh, you know, the, they, they just, you know, um, accepted me with open arms and uh, I'm forever grateful for you know my coaches my teammates who you know we work in day in and day out on you know our culture and coach Lloyd has been great with that and so um, I just you know I'm, I'm forever grateful uh, but as far as you know um, this team this team is special we've been through so much um, with through the wins the losses we always stay together and so I think that's what's uh, special about this team and then on and off the court I feel like we're connected um, on another level you're having a great season, averaging 19 points a game, probably the leading candidate for Pac-12 Player of the Year, chance to be an All-American, etc. I mean, I, I know you as a, you're, you're a confident young man. Uh, you expect to, to go out and play well night in and night out. Did you envision at all uh, the chance to be the leading scorer right now on a team that's ranked in the top five? I just wanted to win. Uh, you know, coming here, I, I really just wanted to win um, and do whatever I could to help this team win. And, and, and you know, Coach Lloyd had, put a, together a plan for me uh, to do that, to succeed, and, uh, you know, then, uh, you know, personal awards will come after. But I, I definitely wanted to win first, and then, you know, it will just be a blessing to, to get those awards as well, though. All right, so without going into the detail, I know Coach likes to sit down with all you guys individually. What are some of the things that maybe he's imparted and taught you this, uh, this season that have meant the most to you? You know, I appreciate him just challenging me every day. Uh, he asked me, uh, could he coach me, and I, I accepted that. Um, I told him, yes, I'm all for it. And um, ever since then, he's been, you know, on me each and every day to, you know, you know get better and better. And so um, day in and day out, um, he's always pushing me to be a better defender on and off the ball. Um, he's always pushing me to, you know, make the right plays and, you know, take the right shots. And uh, I think that's probably what stuck with, it, stuck with me the most, just him constantly pushing me every day. Another thing that, uh, that you hit on Saturday, now over 100 assists on the season, mm-hmm. and three players on this team have surpassed the 100 assist mark. That's a, a rare thing to do. Uh, tell us about how Tommy has, has taught that part of the game in terms of the ball movement that allows you guys to uh, assist one another. I just think playing within a system, uh, you just going, you know, we, we play so fast, we play so free. And he gives us freedom on the offensive end to, you know, maneuver throughout our offense. And so um, I think just us, uh, playing with each other, knowing where you know each other likes likes the ball, and um, I think Big O is a big part of those assists. Uh, you know, just give it down to him, and you know he's going to deliver. But uh, we also got great shooters. You know, Keyshawn is you know expanding his game to that. Um, Pella and you know Kyle, and it's almost a, every time you pass to him, it's almost a, a knockdown. So um, I think you, it's, it's accustomed to what what we do as well each and each and every day as far as working on our game and um, just playing through playing within a system all right so those that may not know this there's a pool table in the locker room (laughs) and my understanding is because i've never actually watched you guys play but it does get rather competitive down there scores are kept yeah and uh, is there going to be a champion or is this just a weekly or daily or how do do you keep track of uh, who's ahead you know we got a board um in the locker room and you know each win you each win you put a put a um, asterisk on it and each loss you put asterisk on it so uh, we keep our score and then at the end of the year we haven't decided yet uh, what, what the prize would be but um, I'm in the lead right now so. well, I, I understand <laughs> that okay <laughs> so who's second best on the team Philip Philip is the second best really? on the team okay. yeah for sure okay yeah. so is it close I mean I you, think I got a, a good good lead pretty good lead right I, now yeah, all right sure. all right Jane would like to know you've got a number of teammates that are from foreign countries or international players. Do you speak any of their languages? I don't. I've okay. been trying to, you know, get them to teach me, but you know, it's hard. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But you, so you don't know what they're saying no, about I've you never, behind never your back. Never know what they're saying. Okay. <laughs> None of us do. Maybe <laughs> <Yeah>. it's better. <laughs> yeah, it might be better. <laughs> right. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Caleb, uh, your your mom and you have a great relationship. We know that, uh, and she has w- missed one of your college games. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. And she lives in St. Louis. Yes, she does. So frequent flyer miles are her friend. Yeah, she okay. got a lot of points. All right. Well, what's it mean to you to, to, to have her? And I know your dad's been to a lot of games as well. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my backbone. My mom is like my backbone. That's like my best friend uh, outside of, you know, my close friends. But, 
you know, she's been there every uh, every step of the way. Uh, you know, whether I'm down or up, you know, she's always there. And, you know, I could talk to her about literally anything. So uh, we had definitely have a special relationship. Um, and, you know, I feel like we just connected on a different level. But, you know, I love her to death and yeah. uh, I'll do anything for her. Absolutely. Okay, so d does she critique your play at all on the floor after the game? Do yeah, you have she, any pointers for you? Yeah, she always critiques my game. Uh, <laughs> she may not – she may wait until, you know, a little uh, – probably a day later if I, you know, I'm playing bad. But – one thing she always going to tell me, you can't miss free throws. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good advice, good advice. All right, uh, we have a couple more questions from the audience here. Dan would like to know, uh, is there a difference between playing in the ACC and the Pac-12? Um, I feel like it's more space uh, in the Pac-12. It's, it's faster. Um, in the ACC, you might have um, – but I think it's, it's basketball. I feel like it's no. different. Uh, it's not as, as physical as, like, the you know, Big 12 or, the, you know, the Big 10, but – um, I feel like it's, it's, it's similar uh, in a sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you had experience in the NCAA tournament, deep mm -hmm. into the NCAA tournament, yeah, and yeah. Murph was talking earlier about how important that can be here when the NCAA tournament starts. Take us through, uh, now that you've been through it, uh, do you prepare any differently, and what do you tell the guys that haven't been there before? Um, I think you just you know take it one game at a time. Don't look ahead uh, because, you know, uh, you just got to be where your feet are, and that's, you know, take it one game at a time. I feel like uh, for us to win, I, I believe that we, you know, have to take it one game at a time. Uh, you know, we got to stay together because um, it's going to be a game where, you know, we're not shooting as well, uh, as good as we usually do, and, you know, we're going to have to win it on the defensive end. Mm -hmm. um, I think you just got to fight through those type of, you know, battles and, you know, be mentally strong. Um, and then, you know, like I said, just take it one game at a time. All right, you're going to play UCLA on Thursday night. You've seen them already this year. Uh, we talked to Murph earlier, down by 19, came back to win. It was a big win here at McHale Center. Mm -hmm. The Bruins are not a, a fast-paced team. They no. do not want to run with yeah. you guys. How, how do you try and force the tempo, or do you try and force the tempo with a team like that? Um, I think we just got to, you know, first and foremost, we got to defend. Uh, we got to limit them to one shot. Um, and then we got to get the rebound, and then, you know, any chance that we get to get a fast break, we got to, you know, take advantage of that. Um, you know, they, they do a lot of different things on the defensive end. They try to pack it in, so uh, we got to find, you know, um, where, the, where the weaknesses are uh, in the defense. And so uh, I think, you know, we, we, we definitely got a good game plan going on. We're going to watch a lot of film this week, and we'll be prepared. All right. One other question here before we let you go, and uh, I asked about your mom earlier, and you've got a younger sister. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. yep. yeah. she's eight. She's eight years yep. old. Yes. Okay. Yep. She's probably pretty proud of her big brother. Yeah, she is. Okay. Yep, that's my twin. <laughs> yeah, that's your twin. Okay. Does she like sports too? I mean, is she, I mean, other, following, other than following you? She's doing gymnastics right now. She, she, she wanted to play basketball, but I, you know, I told her wait till, you know, I could teach her. I'd be, I want to be a coach. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Well, well we, we know that you have plans and you will be playing pro basketball here down the road. Was that always a dream of yours? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, growing up, you, you know, that's obviously a dream. You watch all your, you know, favorite players uh, growing up, Kobe Bryant, uh, you know, guys like LeBron James, obviously. Um, and then you got, you know, I got to the privilege to watch Jason Tatum and Bradley Bill, Larry Hughes um, in my own city. So um, just seeing what they've done has uh, inspired me to, you know, obviously want to get there. And, and Jason Tatum's dad was your, your coach, is that correct, in high yep. school? Yep. And uh, what, what, what were some of the things that he taught you, and, and how did you see that through his son? Um, he kind of taught me how he taught Jason. Uh, I watched a lot of film on, on Jason in high school, um, and, you know, I just kind of got a, that killer mindset as far as, you know, um, anybody that steps in front of you, you know, you, you want to, you know, you see blood. So um, I think just just uh, being with him, uh, learning from him and him having that, that experience, he, he went to SLU um, and, you know, now he's coaching overseas. Just just uh, having that relationship with him it was, was definitely a, part, uh, a big part of my success. Well, uh, I can't tell you how much, Caleb, you've met to these fans here. Uh, not a great season of Wildcat basketball. You're one of the major reasons why. And so... Congratulations so far, yep, and yep. best of luck this weekend and down the road. I appreciate it. That's today's Spotlight on a Cat has been brought to you by O'Reilly Chevrolet. Get more with O'Reilly Chevrolet. 
This hour of the Meridian Wealth Management pregame show is brought to you by Advanced Auto Care, Crest Insurance Group, Desert Diamond Casinos, First Chiropractic, Frog in Firkin, Kaiser Garage Doors and Gates, Picture Rocks Cooling, Heating and Plumbing, The Polston Results Team with Keller Williams, Southern Arizona, Royal GMC Buick and Cadillac, Royal Kia, Royal Jaguar Land Rover, The Window Depot. Get the backyard you've always wanted with a custom pool from First Choice Pools, a backyard oasis built around you. First Choice is a full-service builder of beautiful in-ground pools and backyard designs for years of staycations. If you're ready to dive in, then visit TucsonPoolBuilder.com. Schedule now and get three months of full-service free. First Choice Pools for installs, renovation, remodeling, and repair. Get started today at TucsonPoolBuilders.com. First Choice Pools, the first and only choice. Look at today's game and would like to invite Arizona Wildcat fans to visit one of their Tucson warehouses. The Window Depot provides over 1,000 in-stock vinyl windows, interior and exterior doors, plus granite and quartz countertops, and a huge selection of custom cabinetry, all at the lowest prices in town. Consider the Window Depot your MVP when it comes to your home improvement needs. Stores are open Monday through Saturday or order online at thewindowdepot.com. The Window Depot, more than a window store. This just in, Goodfellas AC is batching up to $2,000 on federal tax credit. Whoa, seriously? <laughs> this is unbelievable. I gotta call Floyd at Goodfellas. Hello, Goodfellas. Floyd speaking. Is it true about the $2,000? It sure is. Homeowners like you may qualify for a 30% federal tax credit up to $2,000 on qualifying heat pumps. And Goodfellas will match the tax credit dollar for dollar up to $2,000. Good service, good prices, Goodfellas. Driving the lane, dunking on the competition, and playing as a team. These are things we'll see this season watching our Wildcats play basketball. These happen to be the things you'll also find when you buy your next vehicle from O'Reilly Chevrolet. The only difference is that O'Reilly Nobody gets penalized for traveling. Heck, we actually encourage it. See us on Broadway next to Park Place Mall. Call 747-8000 or find new roads at O'Reilly.com where you can experience our version of a steal. O'Reilly Chevrolet. More than a great price. O'Reilly Chevrolet. The new Blue Whale Car Wash, formerly Octopus Car Wash, is now open. They're locally owned and operated and offer many ways for you to save. Start now by downloading the Blue Whale Car Wash app. Then visit their website at bluewhalecarwashaz.com to find a location near you. Don't forget to follow them on Instagram and Facebook for even more savings. And for a limited time, their exterior-only wash is $5 at all four locations. Blue Whale Car Wash, proud radio sponsor of the University of Arizona Wildcats. Caruso's, a Tucson tradition since 1938, located on historic 4th Avenue. For four generations, Caruso's handmade sauce has been prepared with love by a family member, using only the best ingredients. Enjoy specialty Italian dishes like lasagna al forno, chicken tetrazzini, real Italian sausages, spectacular pizza, as well as many vegetarian options. Caruso's offers outdoor dining on their garden patio with indoor dining also available. Open Tuesday through Sunday with all your favorites available for takeout. For more information, call 520-624-5765 or visit their website at carusositalian.com. I'm a big believer in investing into what the wealthiest people in the world invest into. But it's not easy to know exactly what that is, and it hasn't always been possible for regular folks like you and I. But that's changing. I'm Jeff Jr. with Trajan Wealth, and if you've done a good job acquiring some assets, now is the time to consider private equity. Private equity is ownership of private companies that aren't traded on the stock market and in most cases are very exclusive. Examples could include ownership of apartments or nursing homes, dental practices, solar farms, you name it. Why do so many billionaires invest into private equity? Because of historically low correlation to the stock market and historically higher returns. If you have a goal with your portfolio but aren't there yet, call Trajan Wealth today. Call 321-4100. That's 321-4100. Advisory services offered through Trajan Wealth, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. May require accreditation. The Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show continues on the home of Arizona men's basketball, Wildcats Radio 1290. Let's take a look at the Right Way Rundown and see what's coming up on our pregame show. Brought to you by Right Way Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Do things the right way. All right, hour number two of our show here today as we get you set for a doubleheader of basketball. 
Arizona women taking on Southern California at the Pac-12 tournament. Arizona men at Poly Pavilion against the UCLA Bruins. Final trek into Westwood for the Wildcats. We're going to talk some women's basketball in this segment. Kim Doss scheduled to join us. We will dive into what happened last night. The Wildcats went over Washington and how they must try to beat USC in a third meeting. We'll also give you the highlights from last night's game between the Wildcats and the Huskies. You'll hear from the players and head coach Adia Barnes. We'll get our view from courtside. We're going to be joined by Doug Gottlieb from Westwood One. He is calling the game on national radio tonight from Westwood. Our pest of the game, who will be that Bruin that gets underneath the Wildcats skin tonight? Brought to you by University Termite and Pest Control. Best bets from the Desert Diamond Casino. The over-under, kind of low on this game tonight. 149 at Poly Pavilion tonight with Arizona as a nine-point favorite. Any surprises on that, gentlemen? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> you're, 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 you're playing a defensive-minded team at UCLA. Go back and look at some of those scores. Last year they played 58-52. to 52. <laughs> 58 yeah. to 52 in Tucson, and, and, and it was 82 73 uh, at UCLA. And even this year's scores for all the games that they've played there, I mean, there's not too many teams that have scored uh, 80 points at, at, at Poly Pavilion. They like to muck it up. Yeah. <laughs> muck it up. Uh, I like that term right there, indeed. All right, when you talk about, uh, you heard uh, again that, that play at the top of the, sh of the segment there uh, that did. Uh, Ali Love from Caleb Love to Keyshad Johnson in the last ball game. 27 assists, as we were saying at the top of the show, for the uh, win against, for the Wildcats against the Ducks. And, and Tommy Lloyd talks specifically about that play and how it really illustrates what this team does in its offense. Larson the rebound for the Wildcats. Feed ahead to Love on the run the other way. Throw it inside for Johnson. And Keyshawn slams it home for two. Seven points for Keyshawn. That was a nice, you know, pass that on the on transition that Caleb threw Keyshawn. But that's something we work on all the time. I mean, if, if you go back and watch the play, I mean, Keyshawn's running. He's even with his defender. Caleb's pushing the ball. Caleb sees the back of Keyshawn's defender's head. You throw the guy open. I mean, it's 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 fun basketball to play, and you know, and and uh, and, and so that that was a great look. And, and Keyshawn's effort running the floor really made a difference. I think if you look a lot of those transition baskets in the first half, Keyshawn might not have been the recipient of the pass or whatever, but he was running and dragging defenders with him that created openings. Yeah, it, it's interesting. What is that when he says that? Uh, uh, Kelvin, what does that mean in terms of the openings that a big man can create when they run the floor like that? Oh, man. I mean, when a big man runs the floor, first of all, the way the offense is set up, you, you have to first talk about the offensive end with as far as, well, the defensive end when you're on defense. Uh, as an offensive player going against the defense, when you take the shot, the guards are the first guys to get back and the big man rebound. So if your big man can beat their big man down the floor, first of all, now he's going against smaller guys. Uh, point guards, shooting guards that are back. Now, What percentage his, now, of Zoo's points came it, off of that? It, exactly. <laughs> and so what they mean by dragging is, so when that big man runs down there into that post, now you have to get like one or two small guys to get on him uh, because you can throw the ball over the top and get an easy finish. So two of those guys got to go to him and they're guards. So that leaves two of your guards wide open so they can make plays and make things happen. A lot of times penetrate to the basket, draw help, and drop it off. So when, you, when they're saying drag the help, it means that people that he's attracting guys to him because if you don't get to him, it's an easy bucket. 520-848-1290. If you want to get in on the program today, talk a little Arizona men's basketball, talk a little Arizona women's basketball, you can also text us at that number. In fact, how about you text app to 520-848-1290. I will shoot you a link, and you can download our app so you can take Wildcats uh, radio with you wherever you want to go. If you missed our interview yesterday with the new athletics director at the University of Arizona, Desiree Reed francois you can head on over to our app right now and listen to that interview uh, in its entirety. Guys, we were talking about uh, Grant Whiteman at the top of the show, and he got the start on senior day. Uh, Tommy Lloyd uh, alluded to a little bit more this week about the impact that Grant Whiteman has had on this program 
and the future uh, that he has uh, if he chooses to stay in the game of basketball uh, coming up? Just high character, high character, great guy, puts the team first. You know, he, you know, his family has an incredible legacy with Arizona basketball. And, you know, I think it's been really cool to watch him be able to have his own journey and make his own impact on Arizona basketball. He's a, he's a, he's a really good basketball player. He's, he helps us in practice a ton, and he takes a lot of pride in that. And, and I think that's really special. And, and I've always, you know, told people, if, if you are looking for someone to hire for your company, I would always look at a manager, a student manager, or a walk-on first. Those people know how to serve uh, the greater good of, of the organization, and, and they know the importance of support roles. And so I, I think that's tremendous. And, and Grant has you know, been, I hold him in high regard, and, and I'm gonna really miss him. You know? and, and he has a, a COVID opportunity to go play another year, and that's what he's expressed that he wants to do. And, there's no doubt in my mind somebody's going to end up with a really impactful basketball player. That's interesting. I, when he said he's got a COVID year to go play another year, I mean, obviously a, a, lot of, a number of the guys have that, um, which leads me to, to believe that maybe it, it, there might be some different ruling for walk-ons. If you can only play four years at one school, if you can't play that fifth year, are you guys aware of anything like that? Like, I'm not sure well, why maybe he wouldn't stay for, for another year here. Oh, no, he could stay, but but, I mean – He's not going to play. Right, he's going yeah, to play. Yeah. He's okay. going to play, DK. And you know what? The first thing it reminded me of is Colorado School of the Mines, where mm-hmm. Majuk Ding uh, from uh, South Point right. and where Sam Beskin uh, from uh, Foothills. Uh, Sam went to Stanford, didn't get much. He got a little playing time, but didn't get much playing time. Same for Majuk at Pepperdine. And then they transferred over to the School of the Mines, and they're all conference. Ah. Right? So I think he's thinking like that. He, he did his four years. That's the commitment. Four years is – you know, more than enough. You, 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 you got your four years of being at Arizona, but he want to play a little bit, which, which I understand uh, from an athlete. He's an athlete. Even though he's a walk-on, he's an athlete, and he want an opportunity to play. So I don't know, man. I, I, I wonder, am I right on this? But y'all remember I said it here, Colorado School of the Mines. <laughs> we'll, see if points? we'll see if that's the school he ends up at. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how many points could Josh Pastner heard of? <laughs> scored like as a fifth year guy if he would have left here after his four years on the bench learn how to coach and decided to go to some nai or division three school or something right i mean i agree i mean i don't know uh mr whiteman but i do know that uh you know spending four years and absorbing everything he has on that bench learning everything and making the connections and networking and whatnot i mean kelvin one year where you can go out there and get shots up right yeah you just want to play man just want just want to play you want an opportunity to have a realistic chance to play i know him as a uh, as a kid I, I know his grandfather i didn't really get a chance to know him but i, I know as a kid growing up in that McHale center all he wanted to do was play a, a, as a wildcat and i'm sure he spent those four years hoping for an opportunity like he got to be able to come out and start that game uh his, his senior game but you know well with that being said now that he's uh um uh, fulfilled his commitment he's he, he just looking for an opportunity to, to, to as j dub said get some shots up Get some shots up. There you go. All right, let's uh, let you know what's happening around the rest of the Pac-12 conference tonight. The Pac-12 scoreboard is brought to you by Mesquite Valley Growers. Mesquite Valley Growers. Real growers, real experience, real nursery. And it is a full slate of games in the Pac-12 conference. Everything this week in the final weekend is on Thursday and Saturday. Arizona at UCLA is actually... Uh, actually, no, that's not. I was thinking it was the first game of the night, uh, but my scoreboard has the Wildcats listed as the first game on my scoreboard. So that'll be the second game of the night tonight, number five, Arizona at UCLA. The Sun Devils are on the road at Southern California over Galen Center on the other side of town. That'll be a 9 o'clock start tonight, also on national television. Other games tonight. A rivalry game, and this is the game we'll have all eyes on. Washington at number 18, Washington State tonight. If Washington State wins that game, uh, Arizona must win both of their games to win the outright Pac-12 Conference Championship. If Washington State were to lose that game, then the Wildcats would be the champions if they either win both of their games or lose both of their games. But if they were to split this weekend, 
and Washington State lost tonight, Washington State would and Arizona would share the championship and Washington State would have the number one seed. So we'll see if the Cougars can keep the pressure on the Arizona Wildcats tonight. Other games, Colorado is at Oregon tonight. Both those teams 11-7 and seven in conference play, so everybody's playing for seeding right now in the Pac-12 tournament here next week for the men. California and Stanford, that rivalry game out uh, in Palo Alto tonight. The Bears are 9-10 and 10 in conference play. Utah is at Oregon State. The Utes are 9-9. Nine and nine. The Beavers are 4-14. Four and 14. Fellas, I would suspect that, uh, you know, again, anything can happen in a rivalry game, uh, but the, the thought is, is that the Cougars are not probably going to lose. I mean, not – if you look at the way they played last weekend in, in coming from behind to beat both the Los Angeles schools. Uh, but again, still, the Wildcats control their own destiny. Uh, if all they got to do is win, and, and they're the number one seed here in Las Vegas on the men's side next week. But it ain't going to be easy. No, nah, no, nah, it's not going to be easy. And, and Washington State, of course, uh, you, you know, they want that. That's the Apple Cup, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, they have to win that game. I mean, if they truly want to be – Pac-12 champions, and and and, and uh, they have to win that game, and they've shown that that they got the grit and they got the determination to get it done. But you, uh, but Arizona is where they want to be at. You in control of your own destiny. Yeah, you in control of your own destiny. That's exactly where you want to be. Take care of business. You win the outright championship. If you don't, you got to live with the results. And UCLA and USC obviously started us garbage nonsense that's going on this year. But Washington, you know, was the first to pull the plug to go over there to the Big Ten, right? Like after the fact. So I know the there's been a big rivalry, bad blood between those two teams. I'm sure the Cougars are playing even for more this this week, DK. Uh, I will say this. I'm not even watching that game. That game's going to be whatever. But the Colorado-Oregon game and the Utah-Oregon State game, mm. what if I told you that Utah and Oregon are on the bubble last teams out type of situation? So Oregon, and right now, they've only got two teams. They've only got Washington State and Arizona in right now, most bracketologists. But, you know, were Oregon and Utah to do some th- – I'm sorry, Colorado or Utah do some things down the stretch, they still could get a couple wins and, and make it in the tournament. Uh, last season, the Pac-12, two teams, Kelvin. If last season, the Pac-12, there's only two teams – in the dance, that'd just be a travesty. Yeah, yeah, it will. But that sounds like something they would do to a conference that's, you know, dissolving. <laughs> that sounds exactly like something that who, 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 who you know, who's gonna yeah. uh, 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 fight for you? And show me, like, it's not as if those two teams got, like, a lot of, you know, arguments to be made that they should be in right now. They just got work to do. So if they want to be in, they control their own destinies too right now. No surprises last night in the top 25. All the high-ranked teams won. Houston uh, wins at Central Florida. UConn takes out number eight Marquette. Number four Tennessee wins on the road at 17th-ranked South Carolina. Iowa State, number six, they won at home against 20th-ranked BYU. And the only maybe surprise was that Kentucky didn't score over 100 points. They only got to 93 last night in their win over Vanderbilt. Well, they didn't play Alabama, though. So. <laughs> That's true. Uh, a lot of eyes on Tennessee. We'll talk about that a little bit later and whether or not they might be on the one line. And maybe U of A is not on the one line. It is the Murder Mouth Management Countdown, the tip-off show. We're coming to you live from the MGM Grand Garden Arena here, getting you set for Arizona women against Southern California, Arizona men at Poly Pavilion, Against UCLA. I'm David Kelly. You're listening to Wildcats Radio 1290. That's been the Pac-12 Scoreboard brought to you by Mesquite Valley Growers. Mesquite Valley Growers. Real growers, real experience, real nursery. This hour of the Meridian Wealth Management pregame show is brought to you by Blue Whale Car Wash, Caruso's Italian Restaurant, Cool Willie's Air and Plumbing, The Diamond Store, Goldberg and Osborne, Goodfellas AC, Humane Society of Southern Arizona, Lexus of Tucson, Nova Home Loans, Recon Auto Detail, Right Now Power Sports Tucson, Tucson Police Department. 
Frog and Firkin, a standout among the bars and restaurants in the University area. Frog and Firkin does what very few pubs can, combine a festive atmosphere and great beer with a menu that could stand on its own in any restaurant setting. A sports enthusiast dream with over 30 TVs, 30 beers on tap, and over 100 imported and domestic bottles. Daily drink and food specials and the kitchen is serving until 10. A standout in the University area, Frog and Firkin. Eat local, support local. Frogandfirkin.com systems are built right here in our great state of Arizona and use a fraction of the wastewater as their competitors want soft water non-chlorinated or the best alkalized drinking water you can trust Ram Plumbing to be your one-stop shop ask about their water taste challenge 40th year anniversary savings up to $500 off water systems and $40 off any service if your plumbing's in trouble call Ram on the double you want to protect her, you'll give anything to make sure nothing nothing harms her every minute together makes unforgettable memories Except that time you parked her under that tree and... Oh, come on, man, really? Sorry, we'll never speak of it again. But remember who came to her rescue? Recon Auto Detailing, Arizona's premier auto detailing company, comes directly to you. We'll make your masterpiece shine like it should, and with a monthly maintenance package, we'll keep it that way. Recon Auto Detailing, online at recondetail.com. Does it feel like the price of everything is going up, up, up? We can't control the price of gas or groceries, but at Royal Buick GMC, we never add market adjustments, even while other dealers add fees because inventory is limited. At Royal Buick GMC, you can rest assured you won't pay market adjustments, and we stand by our transparent online pricing. Royal Buick GMC, the dealership that's different. OAC plus tax, title, license, dealer installed options, and 529 dock fee. Royal Buick GMC, in the Auto Mall and at RoyalTucson.com. Spring is here and so are the allergies. I'm Janae Arenas and if you're a mom like me, you're concerned about how clean the air is that your family is breathing. That's why we offer duct cleaning, aeroseal duct sealing, and air purification. Call us at Picture Rocks Cooling at 520-440-4069. Your family deserves to breathe clean, healthy air. Picture Rocks Cooling, heating and plumbing. Sean Furrier for Jack Furrier Tire and Auto Care. Spring is on its way, and we all know that extreme heat comes next. Right now is the time to get your car or truck road trip ready. And with 14 convenient locations, six decades of service, and dozens of top shop awards, Jack for Your Tire and Auto Care is the place. This month, get back big rebates on all your favorite major brand tires. Save more on the most affordable, long-lasting tires. Check out jackforyears.com for details and money-saving coupons. Jack for Your Tire and Auto Care, here to get you there. You know it. Your neighbors know it. And let's face it, the mailman knows it too. Your yard just isn't what it used to be. But thankfully, Dorado Rock Materials can get you, well, your yard anyway, back to what it once was. And even better, Dorado Rock and Materials has just what your yard needs, from decorative rock to boulders and everything in between, brought right to you. And if you need help spreading it, we can help with that too. Dorado Rock and Materials. The right service, the right product, the right price. The Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show continues on the home of Arizona men's basketball, Wildcats Radio 1290. And we're back here in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand Garden Arena coming to you here at the Pac-12 Women's Basketball Tournament. Arizona Women's Basketball taking on Southern California, the number five team in the country tonight in the quarterfinals. That game will tip off at 7 o'clock, 6.45 coverage. You'll hear that on Freedom 1400 tonight. Derek Palmer with the call. He had the call last night. A 58-50 win over the Washington Huskies. As it skips to Schwartz in the corner. Has it poked away from behind by Poeo. Stolen away to Jones. Skyler going end to end as she goes underneath the basket with a left hand. Out of the timeout, the Cats force two turnovers and get two buckets. Now down one. 
Pueo hesitates, gets inside the arc, circles back, gets it to a cutting Martinez who's at the rim to score it. Back in front go the Wildcats, and the buzzer will sound to end the first quarter. Arizona now answers an 8-0 run with six straight points of its own to Williams. Ten seconds to shoot as she resets with Cunningham. Pueo slams on the brakes, five seconds, gets this to a cutting Martinez with a left hand. She's able to roll it in. Back in front go the Wildcats, 25-23, two minutes, 10 seconds to play. To the right side, Martinez fakes the handoff, attacks to the baseline, crosses over, backs down Noble and is able to push that one again off the glass to score it. She is in double figures with 10. Get it to the left of the lane, and Williams to Pueo with a reverse layup to score it. 12 points now on 11 Washington turnovers. The Cats back up four. Largest lead for either side has been five. Dines circling around all sorts of offensive and defensive players and now tries to go back to the center circle, but instead Pueo is able to steal it and score it off the glass, and the Cats have their largest lead out at seven. 20 seconds left. Cats need a stop here and a relatively comfortable seven-point lead going into the fourth quarter. Hands it off to her top of the key. Five seconds to shoot as Schwartz picked up there by Pueo. One second, gets the shot up, it's blocked, and a 30-second violation is going to be forced by the long-armed Helena Pueo. Pueo inbounds to Martinez, gets a little separation, then kicks it out. Blakely run off the three-point line by Stein, so she steps to the left and buries a three. Alexis of Tucson, charity three, and the Cats have the first double-digit lead with 7.45 to play. Rebounds pulled down by Daniels. Here come the Huskies trailing 48-39. A bucket here and things are going to get a little bit tight. But it's going to be taken away by Jones in the center circle as she goes end to end after stealing it from Steins back out to an 11 point game. 13.7 seconds left and the Wildcats are defending a baseline inbound play that is initially looking for Schwartz. Instead, up top, Steins. Quick close out there. She's going to put up a three-pointer that's blocked by Pueo. Loose ball's picked up by Martinez, and now a foul's committed in the front court, Blakely. Eight and a half seconds left. Courtney's going to the free throw line to seemingly put it on ice. Rolls off the rim, but it doesn't matter because it's triple zeros, and the Wildcats win that first round game. Hard fought, close for most. Cats had an 11 point lead with 5.34 to go. Washington made it 52 to 50, but Arizona able to ice it at the foul line while forcing Washington to go without field goals over the last four minutes and one second to win 58 to 50. And can now turn their attention to University of Southern California. 14 points for Helena Pueyo last night. 14 for Esmeri Martinez. In fact, Helena Pueyo, 14 points, 5 steals, and 5 assists. Let's hear from the Wildcats after a 58-50 win over the Washington Huskies. We started the game, I think our defense was awful. Um, not awful, but I think they were nervous. The three freshmen starting, I think we were like, ah, because um, we let them shoot. 50% from the floor, from the field, and almost 50% from the three. So, was not happy with our defensive intensity. Not the making mistakes, just like our intensity. Challenged them at halftime. I thought second half was a much better defensive effort. Wouldn't you guys say so? Yeah. And maybe they settled a little bit, but and then down the stretch, even better. So, but but that's the way I think moving forward. That's the way we have to play from the beginning of the game. Um, but I thought, yes, I thought Courtney did a really good job of coming in and putting a lot of pressure on the ball, and then made us better. I'm um, just, you know, th the other four around her. Um, I thought Brea and I thought Esmeri did a really good job of guarding the post and the guards, because we remember they play four guards. So that's a challenge for our post players. But I thought uh, overall down the stretch, we got better as the game went on. You know, that's playing seven players. So, in the back us. here. Uh, this is uh, David Kelly, Wildcats yeah. Radio 1290 for Skyler and Adia. Adia, you just kind of noted to, to, to Courtney, she scored just five points, but she was plus 16. Yeah. Uh, Skyler, just when she was in the game, what, what did she add uh, to, to the team overall? And, and, and Adia, what, other, what else besides, uh, you know, maybe what she was doing defensively that, that she was able to do there? 
Courtney a dog. She going to come in the game, and she's just going to bring that spark off the bench no matter what, no matter if she plays 30 minutes or 20 minutes. It doesn't matter. She's going to be a dog. She's gonna, she brings intensity off the bench defensively as well. She always presses the ball. She gets a lot of steals, deflections. She just makes a difference on the court, and she can score the ball too. So we always talk about that dog mentality, just being tough and gritty and um, just relentless. And Courtney is that. Um, Courtney is like that itch in the middle of your back that you can't reach. And you have to like find something to get to it. Um, that's what she does. And that's what she. I want her to do. And that's what she's capable of doing. Um, and she did that because her pressuring in the backcourt slowed Savia down. And that was really important because Savia is a really good player and she's a freshman. Um, and I think by her doing that, then on the perimeter, one pass away, we were better in the front court. So... Um, a really huge defensive effort by her, and she hit a really big three. When we couldn't pull away, that step back, that side step, which I don't usually like a side step three, um, but that side step, step back three in the corner was huge and gave us a lot of momentum. So she came in and gave us huge minutes, um, and we're going to really need her to continue to play like that tomorrow. And I think for her, because she's such a good um, defensive player, she can get steals that creates early offense and get to the basket a little bit more. So I think she'll be playing even better as this um, tournament goes on. <coughs> Up here in the back. Oh, sorry. Jenna Fink from KVOA News 4 Tucson for Helena and Adia. Um, that third quarter, you were really the spark. I wrote down you had six points, three steals, two assists, and a rebound in the third. Mm -hmm. um, how, what were you kind of, what was your mindset in that period? And then Adia, how important is it to see that from your, you know, your senior leader? I think our mindset, we just like keep going. We just had to keep pushing. As she said, it's an, a new season, so you never know. But I mean, just just like bring energy, just keep keep pushing the ball, just keep pushing on on defense too. And I think that was our mindset. Yeah, so I think we were really flat in the beginning. I think we settled, and then we got more comfortable, and then got some confidence from our defense. Um, Helena, they call her the Cookie Monster. I should call her like the Stat Eater, um, because she just like you look at the stats, you're like, oh, you know, her stuff is always silent, and it's like. It'll be like 14 points, seven assists, five steals, two blocks. I mean, I mean, she had five blocks today, I think, right? Um, she had four blocks. But we're talking about she does everything. She doesn't turn the ball over a lot. She's extremely <laughs> efficient. She doesn't take a lot of shots, and she scores points with limited shots. But that's what she does. Um, I think she's finally getting her flowers this year. And I'd say started to get them last year. But I've always said it. She's one of the most underrated players. Um, in the country. And if you watch her and you know basketball, she's a very good basketball player, and her strength is passing. Her, you know, so if you watch the way she passes the ball, moves the ball, for us, I ask her to do everything. So she plays the one, she plays the two, she plays the three, she plays the four, and she guards like some of their best players, and she played 40 minutes, which I don't realize I always play her 40 minutes, but she's hard to take off the floor because she does so many things. So she's special. Um, you know, I'm just proud of her, and I think that it shows, like her experience shows. She's the only player left from the national from the um, team that went to the national championship game, and um, her experience and what she does down the stretch it shows in situations like this. And she can teach these uh, youngsters. She can teach um, Brea and Skyler and um, Jada because it's it's a learning experience. They're getting tremendous experience this year that will pay dividends later. In the back here again, and then over to Lindsay. Uh, for as Mary and Skyler, just uh, what did you like about the way you guys passed the ball tonight? You were able to get uh, you know a lot of shots easy uh, at the basket uh, off the passing tonight. Uh, well, Ez and Poyo did a really good job of cutting. Like if somebody was trapped, they would just back door and cut, and we got a lot of good uh, plays off that. It opened up things for Brea, for Ez, and Poyo, things like that. It opened up things for shooters as well. So I feel like we're playing really unselfish, and we've been playing like that for the last few months, so I think we're just all getting comfortable playing with each other, especially in this time is really important, and all the possessions matter, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's very Start the game, I think but our defense is, was awful. Is, is a, um, I mean, not awful, but I think they were we're the youngest team. We've had some good wins. We've also lost a lot of close wins, but this is with a young team. So um, and I think we're capable of winning some more games. So battling, and tomorrow will be a challenge. Tomorrow for us, um, it's payback because I really felt like we let the USC game slip, slip up for each other and fights. Without the players in limited practice for the last two and a half months. So I'm proud of them. So just proud of them. People may say, oh, Adia, you know, you guys are down a little bit this year. You're younger. But it's been one of the most enjoyable years to coach because it's been fun. There has been some adversity, but it's been fun with this group that just is um, hungry and wants to do what, you know, wants to win and figure out a way with seven players in limited practice for the last two and a half months. So just proud of them. Lindsay?
Lindsay Schnell, USA, USA Today. Hi, Dia. Do you feel that you, you, feel are, that playing you are playing for spot in the tournament? The tournament, the tournament, yeah. seating. tournament seating? What do you think you, think need, you need to do to solidify, solidify and, and make sure you have a make spot, sure you yeah, have this spot there? Yeah, this game was very important in my mind. I'm, I'm not on committee. I, don't, I'm, um, I think that USC game probably would have solidified us in the tournament, I think. Call me back, so phone tag. But I, I, don't but I think this game was pressure, a must win for us to have that chance. And I think that we've showed that we are a tournament team. Because and hopefully the committee USC. agrees with what I think. To me, in my opinion, um, I think that USC so, game probably would have been But, um, but in the we've had some good wins. We've also lost but a lot of close wins. But this is with a young team. And I think, that um, that and I think we're capable we of winning some more games. And, and tomorrow will be a challenge. Tomorrow for us, but, um, um, but it's payback because I really felt like we let the USC game slip away in Tucson a week ago, and that was a hard loss. So I think that it's now it's a different season. You know, I was with the team a couple years ago. It just got hot at the right time. Really like There's a little bit of luck and USC a lot of hot. Just want it's away. one game. It's not a three-game series. It's one game loss. to win. So I think um, that so we I feel good about that. I think we're in a good season. place. I think um, this you know, game will build confidence, and, and I think right that we're going to be ready. And, and I, I think we are a team. And I also think the Pac-12 should have more than seven teams in it, just like other conferences. If you compare us head to head, I think this game will build confidence. And I think uh, that we're be Yahoo Sports and I, and idea for I, I you. Um, you mentioned the Washington's off. More than seven teams in it, just like other conferences, if you compare us head to head. This, this, this is the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip Off Show on the home of Arizona men's basketball, Wildcats Radio 1290. The Window Depot is proud to sponsor the first look at today's game and would like to invite Arizona Wildcat fans to visit one of their Tucson warehouses. The Window Depot provides over 1,000 in-stock vinyl windows, interior and exterior doors, plus granite and quartz countertops, and a huge selection of custom cabinetry, all at the lowest prices in town. Consider the Window Depot your MVP when it comes to your home improvement needs. Stores are open Monday through Saturday or order online at thewindowdepot.com. The Window Depot, more than a window store. Arizona's leading personal injury law firm for more than 30 years. Goldberg and Osborne agrees. Bear down, Arizona. With offices statewide, including five in Tucson and Southern Arizona, the Eagle gives you home field advantage. More than 1,800 five-star Google reviews prove Goldberg and Osborne has the playbook for any situation. So after any accident, let the attorneys voted best personal injury law firm tackle that insurance company and get you the settlement you deserve. Goldberg and Osborne, 1-800-THE-EAGLE. Society of Southern Arizona. When you adopt from us, you will save more than one life. You'll also make room for the next pet in need. The Humane Society of Southern Arizona has been compassionately serving pets and the people who love them since 1944. Our knowledgeable adoption matchmakers will help you find the right pet for your home and support you after you adopt. We are open seven days a week at our main campus at 635 West Roger Road. Learn more and see adoptable pets at hssaz.org. <laughs> True Wildcat fans know that when you're looking for the best place to watch all the big games on big screens, drinking cold beer and having the best food, all paths lead to Desert Diamond. Bet on your Wildcats and all your favorite teams 24-7 on our easy-to-use kiosks. Come chill on our comfy couches and build your best bet at Arizona's best bet, the Desert Diamond Sportsbook and Bar. Enterprise of the Thana Autumn Nation. Problem gambling? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Desert Diamond Casino is licensed in Arizona. Do you often worry you left the garage door open? With a LiftMaster garage door opener powered by MyQ, you'll never worry again. You can control, secure, and monitor your garage from your smartphone anytime from anywhere through the MyQ app. As an authorized LiftMaster dealer, we have smart openers designed for your needs, including belt drive motors for ultra-quiet operation, integrated camera for live video streaming, and battery backup that lets you in when the power is out. Kaiser Garage Doors and Gates is your authorized local LiftMaster dealer. Visit KaiserDoor.com for more information. Here's an important message from University Termite and Pest Control. The weather is cooler here, and so pests are seeking alternative housing. Do you need a professional? University Termite and Pest Control has been serving Tucson since 1974. You can be assured University Termite and Pest Control will keep you pest-free using the most responsible products and application methods. 28 school districts, three hospitals, two colleges, one university, and thousands of homeowners trust University Termite and Pest Control for the past 50 years. You can too. University Termite and Pest Control. Find us online at BePestFree.com. 
Day in and day out, we're inundated with commercials asking to review your portfolio or telling you to get a second opinion. This is Natalie Fernandez with Meridian Wealth Management, and I want to share the advice I give people every day. Talk to three different advisors at three different firms. It's important to understand their differences and find someone you can trust. I want Meridian to be one of your three, and then you will decide who is best for you. To learn more, call us at 719-1433 today. Advisory services provided by Meridian Wealth Management, a registered investment advisor. Desperate buyers have created tremendous opportunity for sellers. If you've had the slightest thought of selling your home, it's time to call Sean Poston with the Poston Results Team at Keller Williams, Southern Arizona. Why choose the Poston Results Team? Past performance, more money in your pocket, over a 65% referral rate, an incredible Poston Results Team staff, and most important, communication, because you and your home matter. The Poston Results Team. When buying and selling really matter, go to TucsonHomeValues.com. That's Tucson Home Values with an S. Com. This, this, this is the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown and Tip-Off Show on the home of Arizona men's basketball, Wildcats Radio 1290. It's time now to take you down the front row of the arena. A view from courtside is brought to you by Kaiser Garage Door and Gates. Kaiser, celebrating 25 years serving Southern Arizona. David Kelly coming to you from the Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Pac-12 Women's Basketball Tournament. Arizona taking on Southern California tonight in the quarterfinals. You'll hear that game on 1400 KTUC beginning at 7 o'clock. We've got U of A and UCLA here on Wildcats Radio 1290. The game will actually be on national radio as well. You will not hear it here in Tucson, but if you are in other parts of the country, you can hear the call of Spiro Ditas and Doug Gottlieb on Westwood One. And Doug Gottlieb joins us. Right now on the program, the former Notre Dame and Oklahoma State star and college basketball analyst on a number of networks. Uh, he is in Los Angeles. And, Doug, we appreciate you taking some time uh, today. First of all, I, I want to get your impressions of this Arizona team, uh, number six in the country and sitting uh, at what many people believe to be is on a number one line for the NCAA tournament. Uh, I mean – I was really impressed by them early in the season. They've had moments where you're like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if they're national championship good, mm. but you know, Tommy's ability to use the portal, use international kids, retain the kids that you want to keep, all been top stuff. And, you know, I, I think this is a big one because, you know, you want to close out the UCLA series uh, with a bang. And they bounced back well since the Wazoo loss. And I just, I, I would, I, I don't think it's going to happen, but I would love to see him squish UCLA. Just kind of, hey, we're 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 the better bu- program uh, leaving this league, but we'll, we'll see what happens tonight. So, when you say you don't think they're national championship, what, what's the what's the uh, maybe the flaw that you see with Arizona? I just I don't know if they have a dude. You know, I don't know if they got a dude. So you don't think Caleb and Love is a dude? I, I mean, I think he's. He wants to be. He just can be so inefficient at times in trying to take over games and the shot selection. You know, and I also think that, look, there are times. The biggest thing that, I, that Tommy had his first couple of years is, you know, when you have Kerr, Carissa, you can't really pressure defensively. You can't get in the lane. Um, and, and the bigger thing was they couldn't really defend. Obviously now, um, you know, I think you're more athletic at the point, And then Caleb Love can guard as well. And you have a couple guys that can get in the lane and make plays. You just have a tendency at times to be inefficient, and uh, that that that's kind of my my fear there. It's just like when you watch him, you're like, mm, do they have a takeover a game guy? And like I, I know Caleb has done it a couple of times, but I again I guess you consider me a doubter at that level. Uh, maybe it's a better mix because you know with Carolina you had a couple guys trying to take over the game. But I've, I've seen it where, man, the shot selection at times can be just questionable. And he's done enough, you know, at this level to where it sh- he should be a little bit more consistently dominant. Doug Gottlieb joining us, Westwood One, who have the call tonight on the national broadcast of Arizona and UCLA. Doug, one of the, obviously the talking points here with, with this Arizona team locally has been the fact that you were able to get 
two guys on this roster that have played in national championship games. I don't know, you know how many times that maybe has ever happened in the past. But, I mean, just what do you make of where we are today in college basketball where that could even happen, where you could get a Keyshawn Johnson who played in last year's national championship game and a Caleb Love who played with North Carolina in the national championship game uh, two years ago on the same roster? I mean, I think it's awesome, right? Like, because the the hardest thing to calculate with so many of these kids in the portal, because a lot of the kids in the portal are, it come from programs where the coach got fired, so the season goes awry. And you, you're trying to figure out, like, is he a winner? And both of these kids have been, you know, winning to the point where they both played a national championship game. And at Keyshot, I mean, I know I'm, I've seen him since he was in high school. Like, that dude's a winner. He competes. He's a warrior. He's tough. Um, so... In terms of Arizona, I love it. You know, they had struggled in the tournament, despite the fact they'd been great in the regular season. They changed their backcourt. They got more athletic. They got grown men. Like all that stuff is good. In terms of the landscape of the sport, it's a mess. It's a mess. Like you know, I mean, the the perfect example is Keyshawn's a perfect example. Like you think he's going back to San Diego State for all the reunion stuff? Like I don't know. <laughs> like I don't think they're super bitter. But it's not like they're like, hey, yeah, you're left with eligibility left, and we're used to you could have been a starter on a team that also could have competed for national. And like, look, it's, he, he has the ability to leave and to clearly make more in NIL at Arizona than he was at San Diego State, and that's why he left. But again, that doesn't mean that they have to welcome you back for every alumni event. And while he's a part of you know the basketball family at Arizona, like, is he really? You know, and if they. Now, if they win big, he's part of a national championship team or a Final Four team, and you know he, his name is on all the different flyers that they want you know, to bring everybody back. But I just, you know, there's something special about finishing up at a place and calling that place home. And we don't really, you know, we, we've created an environment where that's not always beneficial for the player. And I just, I don't, I don't think that's what it's about. And I, I also think like. Um, if you ask yourself this, like how many people nationally could name a UCLA starter, let alone multiple? The answer would be like zero. <laughs> <laughs> um, Duke. I mean, outside of uh, Filipowski, yeah. how many Dukies, Duke starters could you name? And I mean, I mean, again, and I'm not doing the I was a sports geek, you know, before I was a basketball player. I've been a sports geek since I've been a basketball player, but just for a second, I will. And, I mean, think back to any of those teams that we – I mean, think back to the Arizona teams. You know, all the great – I mean, obviously, I'm not sure if you were Miles Simons, my oldest friend in basketball, right? And you had Dickerson and Bibby and A.J. Bramlett, right? Justin Wessel and Jason Terry off the bench, right? Like, I, you remember those, those teams through all of the list of guys. And, and I'll grant you that a lot of it we learned from the NCAA tournament, but – those of us are hoop heads. Like, you, you literally need name tags for players for the first half of the season, and I, I can't <laughs> imagine what it's like if you're not like a hardcore basketball fan. You turn it on, you're like, wait, Kilo's plays for Arizona now. Yeah, wasn't he in North Carolina last year? <laughs> no, Kishot plays at Arizona. They wasn't at San Diego State. Like, it's so weird. So, um, and, and I'm I'm not going ostrich head in the sand. Don't understand that this is a new era. I do. But we, on some levels, need to protect even the players from themselves not understanding what's coming when college basketball ends. And I mean, I can just tell you from firsthand experience. Like, having played, I transferred uh, from Notre Dame to Oklahoma State. I sat out for a year at a junior college and didn't play. But my three years at Oklahoma State, like, that came my home. That's everything that I call on. It's way more valuable than any 18- to 22-year-old kid can realize. And we need adults to sometimes step in and go like, hey, let's kind of protect you guys from yourself. And we're not doing that. Doug Gottlieb joining us. Uh, He's an analyst for the Westwood One Radio Network National Talk Show host. It is our View from Courtside brought to you by Kaiser Garage Door and Gates. Kaiser celebrating 25 years of serving Arizona. So, Doug, then what would you like to see changed? As somebody that, you know, that, that was a former student athlete, 
uh, that you know now talks about this on a national level. Uh, what would you like to see changed in terms of, of NIL and the transfer portal to make it better? Great question. Um, my answers have always kind of been the same here, right? I mean, the first thing is it's comical that we call it NIL because it's name, image, and likeness, and nobody can name half these kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? Like, what? But whatever, okay? So this is the pattern we've, we've chosen. Oh, fine. Okay, I mean, uh, you know, the NCAA passes. The, cra- the crazy part is, you know, like, the NCAA is just the schools voting. They all vote on these rules. They all want these rules. And then the second one of these rules affects their team, they're like, whoa, who made these rules? <laughs> um, so I, I would say, to me, the two easiest things, everybody says transfer portal. There's nothing wrong with the transfer portal. What there is is, uh, one, you got to sit out for a year. And two, you can't collect NIL until you've actually played for the school. Mm. Right? So, again, and, and when people go like, wait, wait, so a kid's going to transfer and sit out? No, hold on now. So, and I don't know how much you guys know this, but all of the money they get in NIL is not really NIL. You know, what schools do is they, you get a, if your parents don't make enough money, you get a Pell Grant. That's like $6,500 grand, $6, a year. Not a ton. You get what's called COA, cost of attendance money. That was a ruling that came down, I don't know, 10 years ago or so. So you can get, depends on where you are, but it's several grand a month to kind of um, even the playing field, if you will, to the regular students. And then you can get what's called Alston money. Okay? Alston money is uh, every school can come up with whatever formula they want to reward you for academic performance. So what I would propose is, like, you can get that in your first year, even if you're not playing, so you're still getting money. But what you have to do is you have to play and actually have your name, image, and likeness used, and then you can collect, collect NIL from whatever collective or, you know, however they, they want to they pay you. Um, but I also think, I just think sitting out a year is a big thing. Like, there has to be... A, and people like to say, well, college coaches, we can get to that in a second, but college coaches have a buyout. If players want to have a buyout, we can do that too. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't think people understand what's coming if they go employee, employee deal. Like, you have a lot of people who are only, they're doing the politi- you know, the, the annoying thing about politics is we only tell people half the story, right? Whatever <laughs> half. So that's what they're doing, these kids. Like, if you're an employee, There'll be a non-compete clause, which I know you know what it is because you're in radio. Yeah. Right? Non-compete clause is contractually there's a limited there's a time in which when you sign that contract when you if you leave you cannot work for anybody else. You know? and that's I guarantee that's going to be part of the negotiations because all these colleges are like what are we doing? We're spending all this money recruiting, getting kids into school, taking care of them, and then they can be here for nine months and then bounce. Like mm, not doing that. <laughs> so I would I would say that you need. Play a year, you need to sit out for a year if you transfer. Um, And I would make the sitting out a year universal. That way, if you want to do the multiple transfers, you can. But you just have to sit out for a year as a a form of non-compete clause. Doug Gottlieb, Westwood One analyst, joining us. Doug, I'd like to ask this question to to guys who who played. Uh, Have you thought about what your NIL worth would be if you were playing today? Yeah. And everybody has. Come on. <laughs> right? Like everybody. I was just talking about this with my boys. So, you know, every, I think every team that has any sort of quality relationship, everybody's on a group chat. And we have one that's most of the guys, that, the name guys that played at my school at Oklahoma State. And then we have one that's like more just for our team. Anyway, uh, yeah, it would have been a lot. I mean, I was the I was the big mouth point guard who did all the interviews, and I would have done very, very well for myself. So better than I better than I probably should have. You know? Hey, Doug, UCLA has uh, been very schizophrenic this year. They've won a lot. They've lost a lot in a row. Tommy Lloyd this week came out and said he thought they were a better team today than they were when. Uh, Arizona beat them uh, about five or six weeks ago. Do you think they're better now? I mean, they they they've lost four in a row. I I, I always call the every every uh, every pile of game notes has what I call a a, a positive stat. 
And the positive stat I was reading in UCLA's game notes is that they've won 8 of 13. Well, yeah, you've lost four in a row. So are, is this a good team? No. Are they better? Sure. Is it a good team? No. I mean, look, he's kind of tried to copy Tommy's model, right, with the international players. Mm. Uh, the difference is Tommy's been recruiting internationally for 25 years, and Tommy, he's like, it's like top shelf, it's like top shelf versus, you know, middle shelf, you know, and he's, he's playing with a bunch of youth, and that's really, really hard, and he had really experienced players previously. Um, but, and they showed last time around, like, they can compete with Arizona, and I think they will tonight. I, I, I think they'll be a good crowd. I think they'll, they'll compete. I think nine is a lot of points, but... Um, is it a good team? Like, no, not really. I don't think any. I mean, you know, the league's not good, and they're not winning in the league. So it, there's, you know, it, it's all, are they better? Sure. Are they young and going to be pretty good if they stay together? Absolutely. I think they will. I think they'll be pretty good eventually. But getting to that eventually is going to take a while. And it's going to take, you know, like UCLA, last year's team that was good. Last, all those players were started their career at UCLA, ended their career at UCLA. And, um, you know, this, it's a whole new world now. And unlike Arizona, UCLA is not – their alums are – I live around a bunch of Arizona alums, and they all want to do one thing, win. <laughs> How do we win? Whereas UCLA, it's like, eh, we want to make sure everything's equal and fair. We want to be good in all these – we want to be good in tennis. So we want to go to volleyball. Women's basketball is very good. But, I mean – you know, their football coach just took a $4 million pay cut to get the hell out of town. That tells you all you need to know about, you know, like you only leave if you don't think you can win. And, you know, and coaches that can't go out, I mean, you know, uh, right down the street from where I'm, I'm actually pulled, just pulled into Paul Pavilion. You know, Sherman Oaks, Notre Dame has Mercy Miller. He's going to Houston. Last year, Dusty Stromer, he went to Gonzaga. Caleb Foster, he's at Duke. You know, Jerry McCain is at is Corona Centennial. He goes to Duke, too. Like, they can't get the kids. And I think some of it is makes a bit fiery. But a lot of it is they just don't have the NIL. And then they don't have, you know, what you have at McHale, where the, the building's not full every night. And, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, Arizona's in for a treat next year. Cat fans are in for a treat. Like, that, that league is so awesome. You know, I've lived it. I've covered it. Um, I've done stuff with my alma mater. Like, it's going to be great next year. But... You know, the, the difference in West Coast and Arizona is, like, tonight is Arizona-UCLA. I mean, this game was played in McHale as bad as UCLA is. It would be F standing room only, really hot ticket, last game between the two. I, I don't, like, I'd be half old man. Doug, I've got Kelvin Efon, former Wildcat basketball player back in Tucson. He's got a question for you. Uh, uh, first, I wanted to ask you, were you at the 94 ABCD All-American camp? Yes, and uh, uh, in, that was in at Fairleigh Dickinson, right? Uh, Ypsilanti, Michigan, Eastern Michigan? No, that was 93. 90. 94 was – I was at the 93 one at, at EMU. 94 was at Fairleigh Dickinson. But, yeah, I was at both. Okay, okay, yeah. No, I definitely think I played against you. You played with your main folks in those guys? Yeah, T folks. So our, our team was Tony Gonzalez, yep. Tremaine folks, Ricky Price, uh, Jelani Gardner, Kristen, yeah. um, oh, Kristen, Kristen uh, Johnson, uh, Lopez, uh, Kristen Johnson, mm -hmm. yeah, a uh, KJ for UCLA, J.R. Henderson, who was my roommate there, he's my teammate in AU. He played UCLA in Japan forever, played in the NBA, and we had Alex Lopez was our center. That's Brooke and Robin's older brother. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I totally I remember. I I played for the Dallas team. We played against you. Uh, 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 you know, down there in uh, up, up in up in actually in Ypsilanti, Michigan, we we played against you. So I always wondered, oh, was that him? Was that him? And, <laughs> you know, I'm, yeah. I was right. It was no, no, no. Hey, no AC in the gym, no AC in the dorms. <laughs> wow, hey, that was you, you know, we got, to, we got to the we got, we got to the finals, and Jelani Gardner was you know Ricky Price was probably the best player in the camp. I thought that year he was really good, but Jelani got hurt, so I played the whole game at the point. That was okay. And we lost to the team Michigan, but that was fun. That was that's a that's a good memory. Yeah, I don't remember if we beat y'all or not. Maybe y'all got us. Okay, <laughs> uh, <laughs> a little while ago. Oh, uh, you know, one thing I wanted to say was about Keyshawn and uh, Caleb. You know, Keyshawn. You know, Keyshawn was there for four years, right? Yes. And you still believe that he won't be welcomed back the same? 
I don't think it's like welcome back. It's just weird, dude. Okay. Like, it just is. I mean, now you're playing for it's, – and, it's, again, it's not like he went to play for Duke across the country or Carolina. Like, San Diego State and Arizona – like San Diego State's kind of like they're kind of trying to copy the Arizona model, right? Like it's it's really that's who they aim to be, and there's a bit of a rivalry there. And like again, you live in Southern California, like you're going to play for Arizona, and again, no one's it is your right. You know, you get that extra COVID year, and you want to go, you know, bank money, and you know San Diego State, the guys that have NIL there, they have like real NIL because they nearly won a national championship. And like Jay Don Ledee, he's getting you know they were he was splitting minutes there. I I, I get it. But um, I just, it's weird when you go play and finish somewhere else. Okay. You know? in, in, no matter in, if you play. I mean, do you think, do you think Hutchinson at, um, at, Michi- at, at Kansas, you think he's going back to Michigan? Like, hell no. <laughs> you leave? <laughs> you're out. I, I mean, you but, out. I mean, them your boys, though. Come on, Doug. You play ball, bro. I mean, if you've been around guys for three years, four years, three years in Caleb's case, four years, do they still your guys just because you transfer? Um, still my guys. Look, look, again, I understand some of the mentalities changed, and I guess they're still your guys. I just – usually when you're out of the family, you're out of the family, like you got eligibility left and you choose to play for somebody else. I don't know. Uh, I, I, and and a little bit is not necessarily what the players think. Mm-hmm. It's what everybody – and, like, Brian Dutcher doesn't have a mean bone in his body, right? So I don't think Dutch – but, you know, people get people get in their feelings about it. You're going to play for okay. Arizona and you can play back for us? Mm-hmm. I, I I would be surprised if he's hanging around Montezuma Mesa um, in, in any time in the near future. And the other thing I want to say about Caleb, um, you know, I understand he does take a few shots, but I felt like at Arizona, uh, you know, UNC is UNC. I, I don't really care what happened there. That's, that's their business. But at Arizona, I felt like um, early in the year, the way Tommy's system is set up, uh, it's, 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 it's not really set plays, right? You know how you call the set play for the same guy to get the shot, you know, all the yeah. time or whatnot. Yeah. Uh, at Arizona, you don't have those set plays. And I felt like Caleb was shooting a lot of those shots off rhythm. Uh, and I also felt like that it's, it takes time. That you, like you're talking about transferring, it takes time to get to know your new family, right? It takes a little no time to get to know your little fa- uh, your new family. And I felt like that some of the shots he took, I, I did feel like a few times, you know, uh, it, it shouldn't have been a three. I would have rather him, you know, get, got into the paint and got, a, you know, a better opportunity that way. But I, But I also feel like that, the shots that he was taking were almost pushed on him because of all the new guys. Larson, uh, Larson is no question. No, 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 okay. no, no question. I mean, like you're you're absolutely right in that they don't have like you know you, you got in Boswell. You got two guards back there that play a lot of basketball and they got to make plays. And you know Tommy does. Tommy lets guys play, yeah. right? Lets guys play. It's kind of that Gonzaga style where they right. come down, they let you play, let you take shots. The, the issue there, and I also think, you know, the setup wasn't great last year at Carolina. They didn't have enough shooting. And, you know, you had two guys back there that were trying to, you know, he and R.J. Davis were kind of fighting over the ability to go one-on-one and get their own shot that wasn't the space, and they're both inefficient. And then, you know, I, there's all these rumors about they're not getting along as people as well. So all that stuff aside, like, again, I'm not saying they're not good and they don't have a, they don't have a shot. Um, one, I don't love – you know, they're big, and they'll beat you up, and they mash you on the boards. You know, you get in that NCAA tournament, people spread you out, hit threes. That's going to be interesting. Right. And then I just don't know if Caleb has it in him to take be efficient and take over a game when they need it. We'll see. Yeah. Um, I think they're tougher and more physical, especially at the guards defensively, than they were in the first couple years of, of, of Tommy being in Tucson. That, that was a limiting factor. That's always been, like, a limiting factor with Gonzaga. Like Gonzaga, until they had Jalen Suggs, like they never really had. They had really good guards. Nobody couldn't really change how you played based upon their defense. They're just not athletic enough. I think this team is pretty good that way. Uh, but I just I do wonder with freelancing the shot selection what that looks like in turn. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I actually agree with you a little bit. I've been wanting more uh, set plays to get guys in more rhythm shots, but you know you can't complain with the success that uh, you know he's had, especially in the regular season. Hey. You know, it's, in- it's interesting. Like, you know, when you – now we've had a couple years. You look at the difference in Gonzaga now, and you look at how uh, Arizona plays, and you can automatically go realize what each of the co- – both of the coaches did when they were at Gonzaga, right? You had the dynamic international recruiting 
and, you know, playing with, with, with pace and spreading it out, letting guys go, that's clearly Thomas. Whereas now you have few, and few like lets the guys play, but they run a lot more sets, and they're a little bit more conservative, and their recruiting is not nearly the same, not nearly as dynamic, right? So you can, you can see the difference in the loss of Tommy Lloyd with Gonzaga, and you can see what, what Tommy's kind of expertise was otherwise. Hey, Doug, we appreciate you taking uh, uh, some time to join us. Have a great call tonight with Spiro Adidas uh, on Westwood One. All right, boys. Have a good one. Doug Gottlieb, analyst for Westwood One Radio, national talk show host on the uh, Fox Sports Radio Networks. So you can hear his show uh, on all of your available mobile apps. Uh, great uh, opinions there on uh, Arizona basketball and college basketball. Enjoyed that conversation we had with Doug Gottlieb. All right, coming up, Kim Doss is going to join us, Arizona Desert Swarm. We'll talk Arizona women's basketball. When we come back, it is the Marini Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off show, also brought to you by Dave & Buster's, the best place to eat, drink, and play. You can watch Arizona women take on Southern California. You can watch Arizona men take on UCLA, all at Dave and Buster's. Coming right back, you're listening to Wildcats Radio 1290. We hope you enjoyed your view from Courtside. It was brought to you by Kaiser Garage Door and Gates. Kaiser, celebrating 25 years serving Southern Arizona. This hour of the Meridian Wealth Management pregame show is brought to you by Blue Whale Car Wash, Caruso's Italian Restaurant, Cool Willie's Air and Plumbing, The Diamond Store, Goldberg and Osborne, Goodfellas AC.
program, we are going to chat with Kim Das from AZ Desert Swarm about Arizona women's basketball. Best bets still straight ahead. Arizona nine-point favorite over UCLA tonight at Poly Pavilion. That's what it looks like on the Desert Diamond Sportsbook board. Also, you'll hear from uh, Bet Shelby. Had a chance to catch up with her after the game last night, get her thoughts on the win by Arizona women's basketball. Keys to the game, starting lineups all straight ahead as we get you ready for Arizona and UCLA tonight, the final Wildcat visit to Poly Pavilion. But if you're watching on one of our many live streams right now, we are coming to you from the Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. Uh, the Wildcats uh, pep rally, I believe, just wrapped up. Saw as Mary Martinez and Helena Pueyo just walk by. Kim Dosh joins us here right now uh, with AZ Desert Swarm. Kim, impressive win last night for the ladies over the Washington Huskies. Uh, what, did you, what was your top takeaway from that win? My top takeaway, and we're seeing it today here between Cal and Stanford too, is um, it goes the way the officiating goes. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> seeing the players able to stay on the floor, I think, is what I'm talking about. Um, seeing as out there, not you know, not being in foul trouble. Seeing Brea out there, not in foul trouble. Um, just ha if you've got seven or eight players, having being able to actually use them <laughs> is to your advantage. But it, it's also just a matter of how much grit they have. You know, they could have, when Washington started cutting into that lead again, they could have thought, oh, no, here we go again. Mm -hmm. And it didn't happen. Um, I think that was my big takeaway. Arizona women's basketball team just walked by. You're seeing the pride of Arizona. If you're watching on one of our live streams, check us out on Facebook Live, YouTube, Twitch, or Twitter. They just had the pep rally. Uh, I believe that... P.J. Brown was over at the the pep rally. Uh, P.J., what did you uh, pick up a mic there? What did you see over there at the uh, at the pep rally, uh, P.J.? Fans, and they were high-fiving all the players <laughs> as they came in. It was pretty exciting. <laughs> the only thing that was a little awry was, for some reason, security had people from other schools leaving the arena going down the same pathway oh as the goodness. Wildcats were coming oh down. Boy. So... As everybody looks at my video, you'll see some strange, like, Oregon State fans walking <laughs> out in the middle of it. So it was, uh, it was pretty fun. The right. band is excellent, as usual. And give us your quick assessment of uh, what the Wildcats have to do to win tonight. Oh, play that extensive, great uh, defense uh, that they played in the second half yesterday. Um, knock down shots and really do what they did the first time around, stopping Juju, mm. um, but being able to finish the entire 40 minutes. I think that their mental attitude is in the right place. You could just sort of tell the vibe yesterday after the game that they seemed, while well, they were loose and joking around, um, they seem a little bit on a mission. Doesn't mean that they'll win this game, <laughs> but they seem to be in the right headspace. And sometimes that can carry you a little bit. All right. Well, uh, if, if they win tonight, uh, ladies, uh, especially for you, uh, we'll do it again, PJ, tomorrow. That would be great. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, Kim, uh, what PJ was saying there I thought was interesting because they took that run last night that Washington gave to them uh, it looked like maybe they were going to fall apart down the stretch again, but they were able to hold together in the final two minutes to close out that game. Exactly. And I think some of the offensive aggressiveness of Helena, especially late in the season, when they know they can strike back, you know, they don't feel, um, they don't feel like they're going to take a punch and not be able to get back up. Hmm. And I think that's been really important. The way she came on in the second half, I think, was vital. It was it was about the defense, sure, but it was also about her offense. And I think that's key. How how um, aggressive is she going to be? Yeah, and I think that's that's what I've been saying. You know, for the last several years, I think you know w if if Helena can give you that type of offense, especially this year with this team, uh, they've got a tremendous chance uh, to be very very good. And, and win big games. Right, because she's she's not going to take 
bad shots ever. You know, so you know if she's taking a shot, it's a good shot. Um, what's different now is if she misses one or two, she's not stopping. And I think that's the most important thing. Hel- Hel- Helena's got to remember that she needs to keep going. Courtney Blakely, what did you think of her performance last night off the bench? Um, well, I think without that three-pointer, it might have been different. <laughs> yeah, you <right>. know? <laughs> that came in at the absolute right time, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and it's good to see her get her shot. You know, she's getting her chances, and she's making the most of them. And that's both her and Skyler, um, they've taken those, those chances that they've been given, and they've made something of them, and Isis Bay as well. Um, and that's the great thing that whatever the adversity, being able to see what they did because of it has been great this, this last few games in the season. Kim Dosh joining us. Our AZ Desert Swarm writes the Arizona women's beat, covers all the women's sports from volleyball to gymnastics, basketball, softball, all the way through. Uh, Kim, when you look at, at this particular team, are you surprised with everything that's happened to this team, them losing the you know probably their top three leading stores in the first half of the season, uh, with uh, with Maya leaving the club and and Sally getting hurt and then and Kayla no longer being here. Are you surprised that they're at this point, or did you think that even as all of that was transpiring, that they just needed the time to maybe get to? Because you know what Jada Williams is doing now, she could not have done in December because she just wasn't ready to do that. Yeah, but did you think that as time went on that they could get to this point maybe with a more limited roster? I'm not going to say it didn't surprise me a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think I think you could say all you want about chemistry, but if you don't have talent as well. <laughs> 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 so, I mean, I think the chemistry went a long way, but they had the underlying talent. So that's they were able the ki- that's the way the chemistry worked. But it was still a bit of a surprise just because they were having problems with foul trouble, you know. Um, so when they got shorthanded, wondering who was going to be able to be out on the floor was a concern. So that's been the biggest surprise for me is how, um, like, Isis Bay talks about how she's not reaching as much, how she's not going for block shots. They're doing smarter things. And that's what they had to do. And that they were able to do that is maybe the biggest surprise. Cut down on those problems that would that were issues even when they had a bigger roster, but were going to be bigger issues with the limited roster. So now I know you do some writing for Ho- Her Hoop Stats. Right. Uh, they've got the Wildcats in the tournament. Do you believe that, 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 they, that Her Hoop Stats is right on that? You know, <laughs> I think you can say... It's important what Arizona does, but it's also important what these other bubble teams are doing. What is Cal going to do today against Stanford? Well, they it, were winning earlier, but yeah. I don't think as much so now. Right. But but those are the things you've got to think about. Um, is some other team going to come in, some other bubble team, or is there going to be an upset in one of these smaller tournaments where you've yeah, got – Yeah, Beal Stitters, Beal Steelers. Like Fairfield, you know, yeah. in their, their conference, will they be left out? It would be hard to leave them out if someone else wins their tournament. You know, so I think Arizona has done enough to get in, but I also know that that's not all there is to the equation. All right, Kim, well, we'll see what happens tonight. Appreciate you stopping by and joining us for a few minutes. Oh, absolutely, anytime. Kim Dawes from AZ Desert Swarm. It is the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show getting you set for a pair of games here. We've got Arizona women's basketball taking on number five Southern California here in Las Vegas and number five Arizona men facing UCLA in Westwood at Poly Pavilion. We've got much more straight ahead for you. Uh, we got a lot of bills to pay. We'll get our best bets in, our uh, pest of the game, and a whole lot more. You're listening to the Countdown to Tip-Off show on Wildcats Radio 1290. This hour of the Meridian Wealth Management pregame show is brought to you by Broadway in Tucson, Dave and Buster's Tucson, Dorado Rock, First Choice Pools, The Good Feet Store, yeah, Check like for Your Tire and yeah. Auto Care, <laughs> O'Reilly Chevrolet, <laughs> Ram Plumbing, <laughs> Restaurant Supply Store, Rightway Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, Rocking KA Master Plan Community Design by Nature, University Termite and Pest Control. 
Thanks, Kim. Driving the lane, dunking on the competition, and playing as a team. These are things we'll see this season watching our Wildcats play basketball. These happen to be the things you'll also find when you buy your next vehicle from O'Reilly Chevrolet. The only difference is at O'Reilly, nobody gets penalized for traveling. Heck, we actually encourage it. See us on Broadway next to Park Place Mall. Call 747-8000 or find new roads at O'Reilly.com where you can experience our version of a steal. O'Reilly Chevrolet, more than a great price. O'Reilly Chevrolet. True Wildcat fans know that when you're looking for the best place to watch all the big games on big screens, drinking cold beer and having the best food, all paths lead to Desert Diamond. Bet on your Wildcats and all your favorite teams 24-7 on our easy-to-use kiosks. Come chill on our comfy couches and build your best bet at Arizona's best bet, the Desert Diamond Sportsbook and Bar. Enterprise of the Thana Autumn Nation. Problem gambling? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Desert Diamond Casino is licensed in Arizona. Coach Tommy Lloyd here. Right way heating, cooling, and plumbing always delivers excellence. Great news. Free furnace season has been extended through the end of March. Have you been thinking about replacing your heating and cooling system this year? The Spark Business, we're giving away an 80% gas furnace or a heat pump air handler with the purchase of a new air conditioning system. And if that's not enough, we'll include a Wi-Fi thermostat, 10-year parts, and labor warranty. Plus, we have zero interest financing available. Call or text 520 200 2422 to book your free estimate today or visit rightwayac.com. Here's an important message from University Termite and Pest Control. The weather is cooler here, and so pests are seeking alternative housing. Do you need a professional? University Termite and Pest Control has been serving Tucson since 1974. You can be assured University Termite and Pest Control will keep you pest-free using the most responsible products and application methods. 28 school districts, three hospitals, two colleges, one university, and thousands of homeowners trust University Termite and Pest Control for the past 50 years. You can too. University Termite and Pest Control. Find us online at bepestfree.com. Sean Furrier for Jack Furrier Tire and Auto Care. Spring is on its way, and we all know that extreme heat comes next. Right now is the time to get your car or truck road trip ready. And with 14 convenient locations, six decades of service, and dozens of top shop awards, Jack Furrier Tire and Auto Care is the place. This month, get back big rebates on all your favorite major brand tires. Save more on the most affordable, long-lasting tires. Check out jackfurriers.com for details and money-saving coupons. Jack Furrier Tire and Auto Care. Here to get you there. Frog and Firkin, a standout among the bars and restaurants in the University area. Frog and Firkin does what very few pubs can, combine a festive atmosphere and great beer with a menu that could stand on its own in any restaurant setting. A sports enthusiast dream with over 30 TVs, 30 beers on tap, and over 100 imported domestic bottles. Daily drink and food specials, and the kitchen is serving until 10. A standout in the University area. Frog and Firkin. Eat local, support local. Frogandfirkin.com. Do you often worry you left the garage door open? With a LiftMaster garage door opener powered by MyQ, you'll never worry again. You can control, secure, and monitor your garage from your smartphone anytime from anywhere through the MyQ app. As an authorized LiftMaster dealer, we have smart openers designed for your needs, including belt drive motors for ultra-quiet operation, integrated camera for live video streaming, and battery backup that lets you in when the power is out. Kaiser Garage Doors and Gates is your authorized local LiftMaster dealer. Visit KaiserDoor.com for more information. At Nova Home Loans, we believe everyone deserves the opportunity to enjoy the independence that comes with home ownership. Whether you're a first-time home buyer who needs down payment assistance, have less than perfect credit, or looking to refinance, Nova has a variety of home loan programs for your unique situation. Visit NovaHomeLoans.com or call 800-955-9125 to learn more. Not a commitment to lend or extend credit. Rates and available loan programs are subject to change without notice. NMLS 3087, BK 0902429, equal housing opportunity. The Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show continues on the home of Arizona men's basketball, Wildcats Radio 1290. Who is today's pest of the game? The pest of the game is brought to you by University Termite and Pest Control. Check them out at BePestFree.com. All right. Who is going to be that Bruin that's going to get underneath the Wildcats skin tonight? Kelvin, I'll start with you. Oh, uh, man, Sebastian Mack. Sebastian uh, Mack. <laughs> yeah, man, I, that's the guy I'm going with. Straight up. I'll go with uh, Brandon Williams because he didn't play much here in Tucson, but lately he's getting a lot of starters minutes. Uh, he's a tough young freshman guard. Uh, a guy, another guy, I always talk about guards, and, you know, that guy gets some confidence, could be trouble in his own building, Kelvin. And I'll just say this too, DK, Mack is just a monster. Chicago kid, tough, 
everything Chicago is about. That's him. Yeah, unfortunately, he's had a bit of a toe injury the last, like, maybe 15 games or so. It slowed him up a bit. But, mm-hmm. man, that I mean, he's super physical. Yeah. You could tell he's from Chicago. That's the way he plays. Yep. All right, I'm going to go with Lazar, Lazar Stefanovic uh, with, my, uh, with my pest of the game. You know, I like to go with a guy that could disrupt defensively. He's second on the team in steals with 33. Uh, and so I think, uh, again, that was a guy that, uh, that was a big part, I thought, early on. Uh, that allowed the, the Bruins to get up by 19 in uh, Tucson before the Wildcats were able to turn that game around. So three yeah. different guys. Well, they uh, they doubled Bona, right? Remember yeah. in the first like six eight minutes of that game, and Stefanovic, he uh, you know Stefanovic, should I say? He took every single shot uh, right off the catch, made them all, made four for five. Guess what, guys? He's seven for 12 from three in his last two games. Wow. Yeah, that's that's a guy that uh, is, is if, if anybody is maybe starting to or at least trying to get hot uh, for that team that's lost four in a row. Uh, it's definitely Le- Lazar Stefanovic for sure. So Lazar Stefanovic, Sebastian Mack and Brandon Williams, Brandon Williams. Those are the guys that might just get underneath the Wildcats skin tonight. That's today's Pest of the Game. The Pest of the Game is brought to you by University Termite and Pest Control. Visit BePestFree.com. All right, we're just rolling on real quick here as we get you set for Arizona men's basketball, Arizona women's basketball. Ladies won 58-50 to here last night over the Washington Huskies. I had a chance to ke- catch up with Bet Shelby, assistant coach, after the game. Here's what she had to say about Arizona advancing. Our 1290 scouting report is brought to you by Ram Plumbing. When your plumbing is in trouble, call Ram on the double. That uh, win over the Washington Huskies tonight, third time around. Uh, what was the plan going in uh, with you having the scout tonight? Yeah, we really wanted to pound the paint against them. We thought we had a huge size advantage. We took advantage of that the last time we played them. They doubled us in the post this time, which we expected. Um, but we wanted to try to control the tempo, really force traps on the ball screen. We thought that would bother them, um, and it did. Um, try to take them out of their rhythm offense that they run. They run the Princeton offense. So um, thought that our athleticism and um, just our aggression on defense took them out of their flow a little bit, so that was good. Courtney Blakely, plus yeah. 16. Uh, what was special about what she was able to do defensively out on the court? Yeah, you know, Courtney always comes in, and she pressures the ball for us, and she um, – denies passes. She does a great job defensively. She had a step back three. That was a huge momentum changer, swing in the game for us. So we need Courtney to do that when she comes into the game. When you look at, uh, obviously, this team right now, uh, wh- what do you guys like most about what they're doing uh, down the stretch here this season? Yeah, I-, I think we just play hard. You know, I think all eight of us play hard. You know, I think we might make some mistakes. Um, and when you hold a team to 50 points, you're playing hard, especially on the defensive end. Um, you know, we might make, like I said, we might make some mistakes. So we might not always do everything perfectly, but we compete and we play really, really hard. So I love that about this group. You mentioned, obviously, dominating them in the paint. Yeah. Uh, you guys really pass the ball well to get some yeah. easy shots at the basket. Well, we're so unselfish. I mean, you look at Esmeri, Helena, they always look for each other. Um, Brea was trying to kick the ball out at times when she was double teamed. Um, just everybody, Jada was sitting there holding the ball, trying to get it into the paint because we talked about that being a point of emphasis for us tonight to win the game. So um, I think everybody just plays so unselfish and they just want to win. Brea's got such a nice touch around the basket. Yeah, she does. She does. You know, we want Brea to be great here at Arizona. And as she continues to develop, um, she's just going to get better and better. All right, what's the key to USC and to maybe getting a win this time around? Yeah, you know, um, they're super athletic. Um, We got to box out. We got to own the rebounding battle. I think that's huge. We got to do our very best to contain Juju, you know, um, try to make her work for catches and make her take tough contested shots. And then we got to box out and rebound and um, contain their shooters. You know, I don't think we can let their other players that can really shoot the ball. They have a really a point guard that can really shoot the ball. We can't let her go off. So can you do the same? Is it the same defensive plan against Juju or do you have to differentiate what you guys did in no, Tucson? I, I think we did a really good job against her in Tucson. I mean, we fouled her out of the game. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was the first time all year she's fouled out. So I think we can stick to the same game plan. We just got to box out and rebound and finish possessions. Yeah, thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thanks for your time. All right, that was Bet Shelby, assistant coach, Arizona women's basketball, giving you the scouting report on 
stopping Juju Watkins tonight. We're giving you multiple double scouting reports. That's the women's side of it. On the men's side, uh, Mick Cronin is trying to figure out how to get his Bruins out of a four-game losing streak. And uh, he was asked this week, uh, who's responsible for this team's struggles? And is it him? Obviously, the season hasn't gone the way you wanted. What would you say is kind of your level of responsibility for that? 100%. 100%. 100%. Okay. Who else would it be? The players? Oh, yeah. I mean, but, you know, they're doing the best they can do. They've done, they've done the best they can do. Our, it's just reality. We got stuck in a rebuilding year. We tried to overcome it uh, with our recruiting. And it's the way it is. The way it is. That's the way it is for sure. Uh, Cronin this week on how his guard, Sebastian Mack, has embraced the style that he wants from him to kind of be the floor leader uh, for this UCLA Bruins ball club. He tries. He tries. Again, um, he's had to play more minutes than he was ready for. Mm -hmm. And in defense of Sebastian Mack, he has played half the, the – from about the halfway point, I'd have to ask Tyler. It's, get, it's late now um, with a bad big toe injury. <laughs> you can watch it if you watch this closely. You can see it. So his uh, explosiveness has definitely been affected. Um, but he's fought through it um, for his team and uh, showed a, a lot of toughness in doing so. It's not an easy thing. But he's had to play more, again, and do things that he's not ready for. And what I mean by that, it's not, any, you know, it's not anything against him. Um, it, in coaching, you know you're in trouble when you're asking players to do stuff that they're not ready to do, that you haven't trained them to do, that they don't have the experience to do. Um, they don't have the tool set to get that kind of job done yet because of the situation where we have played so many young guys. And I'll take you back all the way back uh, to the guys that are here all the time. Um, one of the problem, I would say if you were to say, well, what's the biggest problem um, that we've had? Our bench isn't good enough because uh, I told you the effects that we're going to have. That freshmen can only handle so many minutes and after a certain minute level for a player um, and, and that's young, it's going to be diminishing returns. And our bench hasn't been up mm -hmm. to snuff. Um, not for it's lack of effort. Um, and so you have to have young, when you have young guys on the floor too long, they're going to foul. That's been an issue for us. Your defense breaks down your shooting percentage trip drops. And so, like, in a nutshell, you were to say, what's been the biggest issue? That that would be it. That's Mick Cronin, the head basketball coach at UCLA. Let's hear about, uh, let's hear, I should say, from his point guard, Sebastian Mack, who admitted that uh, it's been uh, an, an adjustment coming up from the high school level to the college level, and you would imagine as it is for any first-year player and he spoke on how he's dealt with those adjustments and differences yeah you know it really it, very, it was really like a big learning curve for me you know that I had to you know watch film reevaluate certain things change my games a little bit but I mean I always knew it was for the best so I mean, it, was, it was a big difference though for sure how do you think you've developed in the beginning of the season so now I feel like I'm a little more wiser about I'm thinking the game a little better and I feel like I'm developing as a more of a complete player and not just, you know, single-minded on one thing. I mean, I always knew I was tough, you know. It's just, you know, just keeping my head up. Because, you know, sometimes I do feel defeated, you know, like it hurts bad. But, you know, everybody in this level is hurt. You know, you just got to keep playing through it and just keep going out there and competing. Is there one particular thing that makes it harder to do as far as your mobility because of that toe injury? Um... Maybe a few things. It just bothers me a little bit, but that's not really an excuse. I can still go out there and play with my fellas and, and show complete toughness and go out there and play. But again, the Bruins have lost four games in a row coming like into that? this one. Do you like that question, DK? 
I did. the Bruins press. He's like, let me give a scouting report to Tommy Lloyd by telling him what it is you cannot do with that big toe injury. Like, hey, let me let me get specifics on what you're having trouble with right now, he Max. go for that. <laughs> yeah, no. He go. No, he did not fall for that one. He's becoming a veteran. Even though he's a freshman, he's becoming a veteran because he's been around the media for a little while. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Sebastian, though, on now. Uh, where the mindset is right now in the midst of a, a four-game losing streak with just two games to go. Where do you feel like the level of fight is with you know, just two home games left? I mean, I feel like, I feel like it's there. You know, we be going after it in practice. We just got to just be able to maintain it throughout the complete 40 minutes, and then uh, we'll be fine. All right, that's the UCLA Bruins. That is your scouting report for today. That's today's 1290 Scouting Report, brought to you by Ram Plumbing. When your plumbing is in trouble, call Ram on the double. Scouting Report for the UCLA men. Scouting Report for the USC women. Multiple games we're getting you set for. Don't forget, Arizona women's basketball is on Freedom 1400 KTUC tonight with coverage beginning at 645 with Derek Palmer here in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. We've got you for about another 26 minutes as we take you to the bottom of the hour. And Brian Jeffries and uh, Reggie Geary will have the call tonight from Pauley Pavilion in Westwood. Let's find out if we can win some money on this game today. Tucson, what are some of today's best bets? Will the Cats beat the spread? It's time to look at some of today's best bets. Brought to you by Desert Diamond Sportsbook, Arizona's best bet. All right, this thing is tight, guys. It's tight now. J-Dub and I are even on the board. Kelvin is just one behind. It's going to be something to watch down the stretch for sure. <laughs> Arizona nine-point favorite in this ball game. I'll start with you, J Dub, since you are now tied for the lead. What'd you say, nine? Nine. Yeah, I think it's going to be closer than that. I'll give the Bruins nine. I think Arizona wins, but not by nine. I'll I'll say Arizona wins by four points, just over two possessions. All right, so you're taking LA and the nine, Kelvin. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with LA. I think I, I think they actually win by only nine, <laughs> so <laughs> it's not gonna be enough. <laughs> So, uh, Kelvin Efon is, uh, well, that would be a push, though. But, uh, so are you saying push? Because you no. can bet push, I think. But No, I don't want to take that risk. Okay. <laughs> now, cats by eight, you're gonna he take, says. Cats by eight. You're going to take L.A. Plus, uh, plus the nine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, at their house. All sure. right. Uh, I, think I, I, I think I agree with you guys on that. I'm taking the, the Bruins and the nine. I think it'll be a tighter game. I think, I think Arizona will win. I just don't – yeah, I, I'm like J-Dub. I don't think it's going to be – I think it'll be like maybe a, a, a one- to three-point type of situation uh, tonight. 149, muck it up. Muck it up at Poly Pavilion. Uh, what do you think on that one, J-Dub? Over or under 149? 149, that's like 74, 75. I think under. I think these games are tend, to, tend to be ugly, especially when Cronin is trying to get his guys to get a win. They've they struggled four games in a row. Whatever they got to pull out, whatever stop they got to pull out, Kelvin, I mean, that's what yeah. they're going to do. And it's they you cannot win a game against the second-highest scoring team in the country by trying to outscore them. It's never going to happen. No. So I, I imagine it's going to be low-scoring game. So I'll go under. Not by much. It'll probably be like 140, 142, something yeah, like well, that. Well, it was 148 here. In uh, in Tucson earlier in the month, so that's that number is right on, I guess. That's just because the Bruins, who came in shooting twenty two percent from three, shot ninety percent from three in that first half. I mean, that score I think is not indicative of exactly what kind of offensive firepower the Bruins have. Kelvin, what do you think? Over or under one forty nine? Ooh man, I'm thinking seventy five, seventy one. Some, I mean, yeah, that would what, be what under. Was, yeah, yeah, barely yeah. under. Yeah, yeah, I'm going under. All right, well. There's not going to be any movement if I go under, <laughs> so so I'll go over just to be different, just so we can see maybe if uh, we can get some movement on the board tonight. I'll take uh, I'll take the UCLA plus nine, but I think it'll go. I think it maybe I'll say uh, uh, something closer to uh, eighty in the low eighties. Maybe uh, one team in the low eighties, eighty seventy five, uh, something in that range right there potentially will be uh, the final score tonight from Poly Pavilion. All right, that is what we think will happen on the big board. 
Those are today's best bets. They are brought to you by Desert Diamond Sportsbook, Arizona's best bet. All right, folks are filing out of the Grand Garden Arena as the second game of the evening, or the afternoon, I should say, the afternoon session has gone final, and it did not need double overtime. Stanford came roaring back from down about eight early to beat the California Golden Bears in the rivalry game here today, 71-57. to So Oregon State and Stanford will play in the early semifinal here in Las Vegas on Friday. Up next, it is your Arizona Wildcats against the number five, Southern California Women of Troy. It's the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show, brought to you by Dave and Buster's, the best place to eat, drink, and play while watching both these games tonight on the women's side at, let's see, let me make sure I got my times correct here. On the women's side, 7 o'clock Tucson time, Arizona USC, 7.30 Tucson time, uh, Arizona UCLA on the men's side. Watch both the games tonight at Dave and Buster's. Final timeout, final segment straight ahead. Keys to the game and much more. It's the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip Off Show. Along with Kelvin Efon and JW Madden, I'm David Kelly. You're listening to Wildcats Radio 1290. This, this, this is the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip Off Show on the home of Arizona men's basketball, Wildcats Radio 1290. KCUB Tucson, a cumulus media station. We have the Arizona Wildcats covered on game day like no one else. We are Wildcats Radio 1290. Experiencing the Sonoran Desert's natural wonders comes easy at Rock and K. Nestled at the base of the Rincon Mountain foothills, enjoy stunning mountain views up close every day. Six model homes are now open to tour at Del Webb at Rock and K. Here, life is about more than just beautiful homes. It's about the experiences waiting outside your front door at this new 55 plus active adult neighborhood. LiveRockandK.com. Designed by nature, built for you. Proud U of A radio broadcast sponsor. Driving the lane, dunking on the competition, and playing as a team. These are things we'll see this season watching our Wildcats play basketball. These happen to be the things you'll also find when you buy your next vehicle from O'Reilly Chevrolet. The only difference is at O'Reilly, nobody gets penalized for traveling. Heck, we actually encourage it. See us on Broadway next to Park Place Mall. Call 747-8000 or find new roads at O'Reilly.com where you can experience our version of a steal. O'Reilly Chevrolet, more than a great price. O'Reilly Chevrolet. Tired of dry, itchy skin? Have mineral buildup at every faucet. Ram Plumbing's affordable, green, eco-friendly water softener and alkalized purification systems are built right here in our great state of Arizona and use a fraction of the wastewater as their competitors. Want soft water, non-chlorinated, or the best alkalized drinking water? You can trust Ram Plumbing to be your one-stop shop. Ask about their Water Taste Challenge. 40th year anniversary savings, up to $500 off water systems and $40 off any service. If your plumbing's in trouble, call Ram on the double. The universal truth of women's shoes. The cuter they are, the more they hurt. You have to put your best foot forward, and if your best foot is an ugly shoe, oh my goodness. Lee Ann thought she had to choose between looking good and feeling good, until she got fitted for arch supports at the Good Feet store. Now I can wear the shoes that I've picked out because I like the way they look, not because they were comfortable. Good Feet relieved her pain and her fashion dilemma. Stop by or schedule your free fitting at goodfeet.com. Go to the Good Feet store at 4811 East Grant Road or at goodfeet.com. Ever get the urge to get out and see this beautiful state up close and personal? Then get on down to RV City in Wachuca City and camper up with a newer used RV fifth wheel travel trailer or pop up. And we guarantee the short drive will be well worth it because we'll be any deal anywhere. And we guarantee it. Bring us your best deal and watch us knock it out of the park. Our small city low overhead pricing is why we can meet or beat any deal you'll find in Tucson. Low overhead pricing, big city selection. That's always the ball game at RV City in Wachuca City. At Standard Restaurant Supply, their vision and number one goal is to improve the lives of their customers and clients by providing a better culinary experience. Standard Restaurant Supply, if it's in a restaurant and not food, they have it. Open to the public, no membership fees, and they offer bulk store pricing without the bulk store purchase. Open Monday through Saturday at 601 South Cherry Avenue or call 885-2345. Standard Restaurant Supply is a proud sponsor of the U of A Radio Sports Broadcast. 
Cool Willie's Air and Plumbing. Always trust the big guy. Mention your Wildcats and receive $50 off any repair at CoolWillies.com. Cool Willie's is proud to be a partner of the University of Arizona Wildcats basketball radio broadcast. Two powerful teams working hard for you to get the job done right every day. Cool Willie's Air and Plumbing. Big enough to help, small enough to care. Remember to mention your Wildcats and receive $50 off any repair. CoolWillies.com. Hi, this is Mike Hanley, former president of Bank of Tucson. And I'm thrilled to announce that I have joined the Advisory Business Council of Meridian Wealth Management and Natalie Fernandez Lee, Meridian's partner and advisor, who I am a great fan of. She has worked with many individuals and businesses in the community for decades. We live in crazy times these days and need the right financial advice, which is so important. If you'd like to talk to Natalie, give her a call at 719-1433 and have a great day. Advisory services provided by Meridian Wealth Management, a registered investment advisor. The Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show continues on the home of Arizona men's basketball, Wildcats Radio 1290. What a day at McHale Center. At McHale. We'll see him again at Pauley. Another classic, maybe not a beautiful classic, but a classic Arizona UCLA. Just what the fans wanted to see here on a Saturday afternoon. Arizona 77, UCLA 71. That's your final. Final segment of the program here from the Garden Grand Garden, the Grand Garden Arena at the MGM. As we get you set for Arizona men's basketball, taking on UCLA tonight at Poly Pavilion, Arizona women here in Las Vegas. The quarterfinals of the Pac-12 tournament. Two teams have already advanced today, Oregon State, beating Colorado, Stanford knocking off California. Tonight, the evening session will feature USC and Arizona, UCLA and Utah as the Utes last night knocked out the Sun Devils. 520 is the number to get in on the program. Final chance tonight. Uh, I mentioned earlier in the show that Tommy Lloyd did not do his radio show on Monday, that's because he was on the road to Flagstaff. His son Liam is a member of the Northern Arizona Lumberjacks men's basketball team. Liam started his career at Grand Canyon uh, before transferring up to NIU, and he was playing in his senior night game on Monday. So Tommy and wife Chanel uh, went up for that. Tommy this week talked about uh, his trip to Flagstaff to see his son play his final home game as a lumberjack. That was good. It, it, it was great to go up there and see Liam. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, see him. And, you know, we haven't got to go to many games this year. Just the schedule just hasn't aligned. They've actually played a ton of games, uh, you know, the same day as we did, almost at the same time. So uh, it, it was fun to go up there and see him and, and hang out with him for a little bit. You know, guys, yeah, obviously you get into this business and, and you have your job to do. Uh, it, it can be tough, though, when you're a parent. You have a child who's playing at this same level of which you're coaching. And, and because of uh, the way that, that schedules align, that you can't really see your child uh, play. We know how much that obviously you know, means to you, Kelvin, to have a chance to go out there and, 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 and watch your son play. And, and you know that's got to, you know, that has to weigh a little bit on Tommy not to be able to maybe see Liam play more games at this level. Yeah, no, that, that's tough right there, man. I can't, uh, I can't imagine it. You know, you, you, you coach so many other people's kids and, and you get to see their kids play so much and not to be able to see your own, man, it's, it, it has to be tough on, on him and the family. But nice that him and Chanel were able to get up there this weekend and, and see uh, Liam play out uh, the final stages of his college career. I'm sure that uh, next stop for him will be on somebody's bench. Who knows? Maybe we'll see Liam on the, uh, on the, on, in some type of capacity here with uh, at the Arizona Wildcats in, in the years to come. And that will be kind of fun to maybe see him start his coaching career under his dad and, and, and maybe where that will take him. Uh, down the line. All right, DK. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll say Gonzaga. <laughs> oh, you think, <laughs> you think that that that's yeah, well, it, it, that would make sense. 
Yeah, I think it'll start out there, Dad, probably. Because, you know, seeing how he didn't let him come be a walk-on or didn't give him a scholarship here, he went to NAU. True. I, kinda, I, I bet that he probably was uh, advised him to go with another coach first to get, get going, and then maybe down the road. Uh, we'll come together. Absence makes the wisdom from your dad, who's a head coach, fonder. Like, you know, you got to get away from that instruction, I think, for a bit. I think it's smart. Um, but again, you know, never know. Never, never know, know, DK. Maybe someday he'll wind up back down here in Tucson. Yeah. Well, you know, this was the last time these two teams got together. The the Bruins shot the lights out from three early in that game. That's one of the reasons that they were able to build that 19-point lead. Tommy Lloyd this week talked about the recent success that his Arizona Wildcats have had in defending the three-point line versus uh, what they cu- came across uh, earlier in the season. Last three games, your opponents have averaged uh, 29% from three-point range. I believe that's 10% less than the se- uh, season average. Uh, what's allowed you? I don't think guys are shooting 39% on us, but, you know. 37? Mm, I'll have to ask our SID. He doesn't give me the stats very often, so. <laughs> What's, what's allowed you guys to flourish or improve? Well, I mean, you know, guarding the three-point line is important, you know, down the stretch. And, you know, not that we're necessarily doing anything different, but I just think you have to have an awareness. And, you know, of you know, there's some threes you're going to live with and there's some threes you'd, you'd rather not. And just kind of making decisions on those is, is really important. Um, yeah, no, I mean, that, that's good to know. I mean, I haven't looked at the stats, you know, as in-depth as you have. But, um, you know, I, I – I, I, feel like our defense is trending in a, in a good direction. I wasn't happy with the second half defensive effort against Oregon, um, you know, and, and we're trying to address that. But, uh, but, but all in all, I think the defense is going in the right direction, but it's going to be tested on the road this weekend. Well, yeah, Tommy wasn't real happy with the, you know, the way they let kind of Jermaine Cousinard get going in that game on Saturday. And, and J.W., it was actually Jermaine. We, we, we got that wrong earlier this week. It was actually Jermaine Cousinard who he was talking about, that he, not Caleb Love, that he compared to uh, Anthony Edwards of the Minnesota Timberwolves, the performance that uh, that Kuzinar put on in that second uh, half. You're jinxing him. Yeah. You're jinxing him. Uh, so Cat went down last night with a parent tear, and apparently Ant, after the first play tonight, went to the locker room. So, oh, jeez. Yeah. Holy mackerel. Eesh. Yeah, well, that was at one point the number one team in the West, but – uh, that that's not good to hear. Not good to hear when your top players are, are getting hurt at this point of the season. And we're seeing, seeing it quite a bit. I mean, I mentioned earlier in the week, uh, Donovan Mitchell with the Cavaliers dealing with a knee injury, and obviously Devin Booker, Booker's missed some games here. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's it's load management. And guys are maybe trying to get ready for the playoffs, but you, you hate to see injuries uh, at this time of the year at, at any level, whether it's the NBA or obviously the NCAA because you've got tournament time. Uh, straight up on top starting next week. All right, let's find out what the keys to a win at Holly Pavilion are tonight. Wildcats, Wildcats fans, fans, our keys to the game are brought to you by the Royal Automotive Group. Royal Automotive, the dealership that is different. All right, guys, let's get through these, uh, starting with Kelvin Efon. Uh, I think we need to bang the boards. We have to win the rebound battle. Uh, Balo have to stay out of uh, foul trouble against Bona. I don't think we have enough big bodies to match his physicality. And then we got to get some easy buckets on the break or on offensive rebound putbacks uh, because I think it's going to be tough to score in the half court. J-Dub? Yeah, same. I mean, I think the Balo bona matchup is going to be key. I think you got to go to Balo. I always talk about going to Balo, but early often make Bona move his feet on defense because he's a monster on the other side of the, the court, a uh, best player offensively for them. Steady guard play. I'd like to see less than eight turnovers from Boswell, Love, Pella, Bradley, KJ. On the road, it's going to be a high-emotion game. And number three, it's very simple. You got to win this one for Kelvin. You got to win this one for Steve Kerr. You got to win this one for all the old heads who've been a part of this rivalry for the past 45 years since the two teams have been in the same conference. Last game in the conference between these two storied rivals. i just like to see the Cats come out with the win today. No matter what it takes, just get it done. Yeah, my key uh, still uh, more more Colin Boswell. I mean, Colin has found his game. 13 points, shooting 46% from three over the course of the last seven games has really kind of really started playing well on the road. Uh, so I'd like to definitely see that continue uh, a solid game for for Colin. You guys talked about UCLA mucking it up. Well, 
Don't allow them to muck it up. Play some defense. Get, get steals and get out in transition because transition will allow you to get easy baskets, much like we saw in the second half of the game in Tucson. Transition is always the key to win for this team uh, because they are one of the better scoring teams in the country. And Caleb Love, I mean, again, this is, these are the games that, that the veterans, I mean, like you heard Doug Gottlieb say, maybe, you know, this is not, you know, he doesn't believe that there's a guy that can take over the game. I think there's a lot of Wildcat fans that would disagree with that. Uh, Caleb Love seems to be a guy that can take over a game. I'd love to see him maybe have a high scoring game where maybe he's more efficient uh, with a higher shooting percentage. Maybe not one of those 10 for 20 style or 10 for 21 games where he scores 25 points. Maybe one of those 10 for 16 or 17 games where he can get his 25 uh, plus points. So more, some more efficiency in scoring uh, for Caleb Love uh, to, to, to provide the points needed to win a big game on the road. Those are your keys to an Arizona win over UCLA. Wildcats fans, that's our keys to the game. Brought to you by the Royal Automotive Group. Royal Automotive, the dealership that is different. All right. The foundation of a great college basketball team begins with the starting lineup. Today's starting lineup is brought to you by Rocking K, a master plan community designed by nature. All right. The rivalry goes to Poly Pavilion. Starting lineup back to normal tonight. Kylan Boswell, 6'2", sophomore out of Champaign, Illinois. He's hit eight of 11 threes over the last two games. Caleb Love, 6'4", senior out of St. Louis. A career best two to one assist to turnover ratio this season. Pella Larson, 6'5", senior out of Naka, Sweden. Needs just one point tonight for 1,000 as an Arizona Wildcat. He'll be the latest to join the 1,000 club. Keyshawn Johnson, Got to that club last week at forward, 6'7", fifth-year man out of Oklahoma. O I should say out of Oakland, California. 1,003 career points now between San Diego State and Arizona. And the man in the middle, none other than Umar Balo, 7-foot redshirt senior out of Culacoro, Mali. He's 11th in the nation in field goal percentage at 64%. Real quick, guys, any final thoughts? before Arizona and UCLA? Well, I just I still can't believe it's the last game um, in the Pac-12 of UCLA and Arizona. That's, that's just all going through my mind right now. I just can't believe that this is the last game in the Pac-12 era of Arizona and UCLA. We'll see him again down the road. But, yeah, I same uh, end of an era, but always love to see the Cats get a win down in Poly. That's what I got to say. All right, Arizona women on KTUC, 645. Derek Palmer against the women of Troy, Arizona men, coming up next here on 1290 against the Bruins. Thanks to J-Dub. Thanks to Kelvin. Thanks to all of our guests as well. Bear down, Arizona. Arizona, UCLA, coming up next. <laughs> This hour of the Meridian Wealth Management pregame show is brought to you by Broadway in Tucson, Dave and Buster's Tucson, Dorado Rock, First Choice Pools, The Good Feet Store, Jack Furrier Tire and Auto Care, O'Reilly Chevrolet, Graham Plumbing, Restaurant Supply Store, Rightway Heating, Cooling and Plumbing, Rocking KA Master Plan Community Designed by Nature, University Termite and Pest Control. Broadway in Tucson presents The Rock in 2023-2024 season featuring eight All blockbuster right, productions yeah, including course. Disney's Aladdin, The Book of Mormon, Hairspray, and Chicago. Enjoy the Southern Arizona musical premieres of Tina, the Tina Turner musical.